Stop being gilded, domesticated garbage. Stop being weak. And when you see a threat come down on you, deal with it. Become a human again. Stop being weak. You fucking cuck. I know that's one of your favorite words, you right-wing asshole. Say, come on, cuck. Ask real fucking questions, cuck. And don't be a fucking pussy because you're a bigoted asshole too. Fuck I think you. I'm an Ellie. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna say it. Since you're talking shit about me with your big fucking ugly mouth, you're all hateful fucking racist bigots. Fuck you and fuck your fucking podcast. Hi, I'm liberal. Oh, I want to be your friend. Dare I say it, hateful cunt. Gaming. Yo, how's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully, uh, everyone's doing good. Y'all had a, uh, good Wednesday. Thoughts on AI replacing my job? Um, not worried about it. Nobody can do what I do, man. I'm a gamer after all, right? Hell yeah. That is weird. Dude, I bought, so I went to the grocery store tonight because I picked up some onions. So I have something to caramelize while I'm grinding in my uh, favorite RPG on my Steam Deck. But, um, yeah, I saw at the checkout, they have like this new flavor of Coke. It's the League of Legends XP flavored. And, dude, it tastes really fucking weird. I don't know. I can't put like my, uh, I guess like finger on what exactly the fucking taste is, but I don't know. It's not really, like, good or bad. It's just kind of odd. Like, I don't know what the fuck the taste is. Like, I want to say it tastes fruity, but it almost tastes like mint. Like, I, I don't fucking know, man. It's weird. It's probably, like, fucking, you know... The seat squeezings from the fucking League of Legends tournament chairs from all the fucking ass sweat. That's probably what it is. They take the cushions out of the gaming chairs and then they like squeeze them under a hydraulic press to extract all the fucking fluids. And then they drip a drop of it into a normal bottle, like bottle of Coke and that's how you get it. I don't know, man. It's a weird taste. Buff Garfield with the two. Yo, appreciate that positivity, man, in the chat. You know, just a quick reminder, everyone. Today and tomorrow are the last... Or wait, no. Today, tomorrow, and Friday are the last days to spread positivity and have it be impactful to next month's paycheck. So if you want to spread your positive support, make sure to do it in the next three days because that will have the most positive impact sooner hopefully I did that right maybe DSP could give me some feedback am I hitting the gym uh, I literally just got back from the grocery store after going to the gym so yup I've gone to the gym pretty much every day for the past year 
I would say like 99% of days. I've maybe not gone a couple days. If it's been like closed or something, but yeah. I thought that Griffin didn't drink soda. This is a Coke Zero, so it's not gonna make me fat. I just wanted to try the new flavor. But yeah, typically I don't, but it's Coke Zero, so technically it won't make me a fat ass again, so GG well played, right? But yeah, typically I do not buy soda. I just wanted to see what the fucking ultimate limited edition Coca-Cola creation, whatever the fuck tasted like. Cause it's like, I would say Coke is probably my favorite soda overall, so yeah. Gotta splurge a little, right? Haha. <laughs> So, you generation with the five react to? We can check it out, man. What is it? Let me check. What the fuck? The, I just saw a bitch with a ukulele and then it just uh, cut to moist critical. Interesting. Dude, what is it with white bitches and ukuleles? Like, you don't fucking play an instrument. You're literally just strumming shit nonsensically. Like, if you're so deliberate on stroking something, my dick's right here. But yeah, I don't know, man. White bitches and their ukuleles. Dude, Coke is way better than Pepsi. And it ain't even fucking close. Benji plays with the five. You should check out a new game called Trey Pang 2. Dude, I've had that on my wish list since like 2019. I am 100. Yep, that shit is really good. I played the demo a bunch when it first came out. But yeah, that's on my uh, radar. I just need to buy it. It reminds me of the old Fear games, and I think it could be a cool game to try out on stream. Yeah, I would definitely be down to play that. I've had it on my wish list for like fucking ever. Here, I'll show you. So nobody thinks I'm lying. Because, you know, like DSP, I'm good at lying, right? Wish list. Yeah, right here. Or actually not 2019. Added on 2-5-2020. So yeah, over three years I've had this shit on here. But yeah, that game looks really fucking fire. Very fucking cool. Glad to see it's uh doing well, too. Nice. But yeah, I'll definitely probably pick that up. That game is very fun. What the fuck, anime? Ew. It's like the uh, Koei Tecmo sale. I had it pulled open earlier just to see what was on sale. I may actually buy those Attack on Titan games because honestly, dude, those are actually really fun. If you guys have never played them, like, weeb shit aside, they're actually very fucking fun. Just like action games, honestly. Like, I was pleasantly surprised by the first one. I don't think I ever played the second one. But the first Attack on Titan game on Xbox I had, and that shit was actually pretty fun. Like, it's really fucking fast-paced and everything, so I would recommend. It's on sale right now. Just skip the cutscenes. But yeah, the combat's actually surprisingly good for it. I 
really want to know what the fuck they flavored this coke with. Bro, I remember when I heard some, I think it was like a year or two ago, somebody said that a high-end gaming PC was anything with a 2070 or higher, and I was just like... Bruh. This is when the 30 series was out, too. It's like, dude, that is not a high-end PC. In what world is a 2070 high-end? That's like mid-tier. Yeah, it is a high-end hobby. But yeah, this was back when like the fucking uh, 30 series cards were already out. And someone said like a 2070 was high-end or like a 2070 Super. I don't remember which one it was, but it's like, bro, in what fucking world? Timothy Marco the two? Uh oh man, thanks for that positivity, man. That's the type of positivity we need before the 30th, bro, because, you know, that's going to have the most positive impact on my paycheck from YouTube. So, big ups. Gaming. New generation with the two, the Coke flavor is banana, laffy, taffy. Hold up. I need to try it now. Let me see. I can kind of see that. Is that what they actually say, or is that what you're guessing? Because I don't really taste banana. It definitely has like a fruit taste to it, though. Uh, Benji plays with the two. By the way, I'm the a regular owl guy. This is my owl. Okay, nice man. Gotcha. It's really fucking bad. Um, I will make you mod so you can post the link. Channel name is Low Spec Gamer, aka. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Dog. What the fuck is the point of playing on PC if you're gonna play on Low Spec? Like, that makes no fucking sense, dude. Like, unless you literally just want a fucking Fortnite CSGO machine, buy a fucking console. Low-spec PC gaming is just... blech. There's no fucking point. Buff Garfield with the one? Oh my god. You're broke! You're fucking poor! And the, with the 10, really appreciate it, man. I bet 1K against my friends that the merger would go through. They all Sony ponies. God, I hope it goes, hell yeah, dude. That's a nice payout if so. So shit. I think it will in the US, man. I Like this court case has been pretty bad for the FTC. Unless the judge is just fucking stupid, which doesn't sound like she is. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty much a sealed deal, personally. I mean, it's embarrassingly bad that the FTC's entire case is literally hinging on the, like, idea that the judge somehow ignores the existence of Nintendo. That is literally the dumbest fucking argument ever when you're talking about competition in the console gaming market. Oh, and did you guys see the email today that got, um, shown in court from Jim Ryan? 
where he literally said that it would have been a better idea for Microsoft to announce an electric car than buying Activision Blizzard. Like, it would have been a better business decision. So, like, even he doesn't even think this is a good fucking idea. So it's like this fucking concern trolling he's doing has no fucking merit because Sony thinks this is a fucking joke. They don't even take it seriously. And then there was the statistic that 6 million people spend 70% of their time on Call of Duty across PlayStation. Which means that if PlayStation did, did lose Call of Duty, they would only theoretically lose around 6 million customers, which is not even close to closing the gap between PlayStation and Xbox sales. So even if they did make it exclusive, there's no real concern about overwhelmingly shifting the market. So, yeah. Overall, man, I don't really think this is anything to worry about on Microsoft's end. But we'll see. It really comes down to the judge, though, at the end of the day. So anything could happen. But it seems like it'll go through. If I was a betting man, I would say it's going through. Damn, man, really the artillery strike didn't kill that fucking thing? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation sponsored the video? Oh my god. Bruh. Nasty. Pedophiles International. This video is brought to you by Air Epstein. Ah, oh, shit. Rickrod with a 5, if Sony loses COD, it would incentivize them to finally make their own FPS. Or maybe even reboot Killzone. Well, I mean, they technically do have their own FPS now. They got Destiny and soon to be Marathon, but I think Killzone should stay dead, personally. Like, if Shadowfall is any indicator of the direction of the franchise they're gonna go with, like, just keep that shit dead, man, honestly. Killzone, like, this is the thing, is Killzone 3 is the only Killzone I actually liked. All the other ones, hard pass for me. But, I don't know. I mean, they technically do now with Bungie, so that was the whole reason for the purchase. I'm starting to narrow down what this Coke tastes like. So for me, it tastes like when you go to 7-Eleven and you get like a Slurpee and you get Coca-Cola and blue raspberry flavor and it kind of melts in the bottom. That's kind of what it tastes like to me right now. I don't know, man.
with this chat, how could he reach Zen? What the fuck does that mean? Maximum of the two, I challenge you to Mortal Kombat IRL. Uh, my mom said I can't go, bro. Sorry. This one coke had the cocaine in it. Same man. Help me stay awake. That's for fucking sure. And stay laser focused on gaming. Yeah, I think we should make high fructose corn syrup illegal, personally. I think that shit should be made illegal. Honestly, like, it's so fucking bad for you. The only thing you, that, like, is beneficial about it is it's cheap. That's it. But, yeah, I think we should make it illegal. But Bill Gates wouldn't like that because he just bought up a bunch of corn farms for that reason. Oh, 100% he'd pay off anyone to keep it legal. I mean, dude, fucking corn syrup is literally killing you pretty much, so... It's extremely unhealthy, so how is Bill Gates gonna get that number down 15%? Unless he kills people by the food they eat. Come on now, guys. We need to get this number down to zero. How are we gonna do that? MSG, like, pretty much, you have to look for that in food now. Because people are so aware of how bad it is. But that's why I won't eat at, like, shitty, like, shitty Chinese restaurants. Because they load their fucking food with MSG. Like, cheap Chinese restaurants 100% still use it. Because it's not technically illegal, but I think you have to mark if you use it. But, you know, if you're ordering off of, like, Uber Eats or something like that, you're not going to find the marking on the menu because you're not looking at an actual menu.
Well, yeah, the Chinese food has a shit ton of oil, especially if you're getting fried stuff. I mean, rice is not great for you either. Soy sauce is not good for you. It's high in sodium, obviously, which is really bad for you. Also, you know, phytoestrogen, which gives you fucking soy titties. I mean, that's why so many Asian guys look so feminine, bro. Like, all the fucking soy. Like, you guys have noticed that, right? Like, if you walk around, I guess, like... I guess, like, even an Asian country, like, you just, like, everybody's, like, ultra fucking, like, rail thin, skinny, and everything. They have, like, zero muscle mass and shit like that. And that's what happens if you eat too much soy, is it, like, kills your ability to build muscle. Because it basically blocks out your testosterone. And, I mean, they don't just eat, like, soy sauce. They eat, like, fucking, you know... All those, like, ramen noodle things, which have a shit ton of sodium and soy in it. Then they also eat a fuck ton of tofu and, like, just soybeans in general. So. Yeah, dude. Soy has phytoestrogen in it. Which is basically the plant-based, like, equivalent of estrogen. It 100% changes the chemical balance in your body. Eating too much soy is terrible for you. And if you're a man, it literally kills your testosterone levels. Can I smoke cigarettes on stream? I don't smoke, bro. So no. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't smoke. Griffin wants the smoke? That's right, man. I want your mom to blow fat clouds into my mouth. Lord Daniel Son with the five. Funny you say that. When I had long hair, I had people think I was a woman. Finally chopped it off about two weeks ago. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody looks more feminine with long hair. Like, that's a given. Yeah, got, like, 99% of dudes. Like, maybe there's a small portion. But 99% of dudes look better with, like, a fucking short, clean cut versus long hair. The maximum of the five fighting game players when they pull off the combo on their wife and girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> that's bold. Oh, I guess DSP. Fuck. Never mind. Shit. Open your wallet and give me all of your monies. Shit. Yeah, did you guys hear that Horizon and Last of Us 2 cost $220 million to make each? Plus marketing? That's pretty fucking crazy, man. That means their break-even point is 3 million digital copies at full price just to cover development costs.
Yeah, great bait, mate. You don't lose mod. I mean, that that's a good bait, my guy, to try and get mod, but the only person that can remove mod is me, and I didn't remove it, so... Nice try. Nice try. We ain't that stupid in this chat. Come on now. Maximum of the two, you remove my mod. Mm, I don't think so, man. I have to like open menus to do that and I try not to do that because it involves work. I can't afford this shit. All my homies hate the FTC. I hate the FTC. The FTC can, you know. Fucking suck dicks in an Olive Garden bathroom. Pretty much any government agency except the military can do that, in my humble opinion. Lauren Bo Burt is a MILF. No such thing as a MILF, man. You're either just old or in denial. There is nothing attractive about a 40 plus year old woman up close if you're under the age of 40. Real talk. What if it's a 20-year-old mother? Well, I mean, I guess, but would you want to date a single mom? I wouldn't. That's basically like dating a teen mom, bro. No thanks. Yeah, if the only thing my taxes went to was the military, I would happily pay them. But until that's the case, I'm going to be angry. Only real men date single moms? Mm, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. Raising another man's child is not exactly what I would consider to be a quote-unquote real man, but hey. I think having your own child with your own wife is a pretty uh, manly thing to do. Not cleaning up somebody else's mess. Griffin talking like he hasn't messed with a 40-year-old MILF. You're right, I haven't. Shit, ain't, dude, the only MILF that could ever exist in my eyes, right hand to God, is the mother of my own child. That's it. That is the only mother I would want to fuck, bro. <laughs> is the mother of my own child. Other than that, hell nah. That's a hard pass for me, man. Hell fucking nah. 
But no chance I would fuck with a 40-year-old woman, dude. Unless I was getting paid, like, an insane hourly rate, you feel? No, MILFs don't exist, man. Because there is no mother of my own child right now. I don't have a kid, so therefore, MILFs don't fucking exist. Until I have a child, a MILF will never exist in my mind. So, cope. There's no such thing as a MILF until I have a kid. What if I was 40? Well, dude, that's different. If I'm 40 years old, then obviously, you know, me being with a 40-year-old makes sense. But I'm fucking 25, bro. I ain't going 15 years up. The fuck? That's like passing up a brand new car for a 15-year-old used model with 100,000 miles. No thanks. It's all right, man. Every new car has had a couple of test drives. It's no big deal. I'm not concerned about finding a virgin. Like, that's unrealistic at my age, man. Duh. Unless I'm looking for, like, some, you know, high school graduation type shit. Or, you know, I hit up all my local high schools and, like, huh, what's up? Like, hell no. I'm not finding a fucking 25-year-old virgin. Duh. I'm not one of those guys that's like, oh my god, bro, if she's literally ever held hands with a dude, she's spoiled. Like, that's fucking dumb. Yeah, I'm gonna hit up all the high school graduations. I'll be like, yo, you a virgin? She'll be like, nope. I'll be like, oh, see ya. On to the next. Griffin is capping when he says he wouldn't fuck with older women. I mean, you can think whatever the fuck you want, bro. I have zero interest in banging a 40-year-old. I would rather just sit my ass in my room all fucking alone than do that, personally. I have zero desire to hook up with a 40-year-old woman, bro. Like I said, guys, really, like, my realistic age range is plus or minus two to three years. That is where I would look for. Anything higher or lower than that would have to be on an extreme case-by-case -case basis, but 15 fucking years older than me? Hell no, dude. Hell fucking no. Nah. That shit ain't gonna happen, bro. Like, no. I am not that fucking desperate to get some action, my guy. So if you meet a 21 year old, is her age a deal breaker? No, I just said like generally speaking, I would look for two to three years plus or minus and then I would decide on a case-by-case -case basis outside of that. I mean, 21 to 25 is like four years, so it's like one year more than fucking three, so it's not a big deal. 
but would I actively be like, I will only date a girl in the age range of 19 to 21? No. I'm not like Andrew Tate in this bitch, bro. How about 30? Nah, that's too old, man. The biological clock has run out at that point. So let's say I dated them for like two years and then got married or whatever. They'd be 33. Chances of having a healthy kid, way down. So probably not. Maximum with the two, imagine a scorpion old God of War style game. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know like what exactly they would make it like, but I mean, it could work. The brutality is definitely there. Synthetic man did a fun. Yeah, I was going to watch that. I mean, I agree with his title, basically, like it has too many cutscenes, 100%. If they would reduce the cutscenes, that shit would be damn near perfect. But yeah, it's overkill in the dialogue. Yeah, I think that's a valid like complaint, personally. Like there's just moments where it's like, literally you're just talking to random fucking NPCs that don't matter. So what, Griffin, you gonna eugenics your kid because it's not healthy? Pretty much, man. I want a strong and powerful lineage. I don't want a bunch of weak little bitches. I wanna start a dynasty, my guy. Not the fucking autism club. I mean, to be fair though, every single side quest and pretty much every single Final Fantasy game is a massive fucking fetch quest. Like, you really don't have to do the side quest in this game, but yeah, I don't know. They could have been better, but I don't really give a fuck because like side quests have always just been like little time wasting bullshit to just like slightly boost your stats. Juan with the two. My bro gets annoyed when I say this, but... Gaming. You're the best big brother I could have ever asked for. Yeah, the only good side quest I've done is the one when you get your uh, chocobo. That was it. Other than that, they've been pretty shitty. That was a pretty cool side quest. Yeah, do you know what's kind of lame though? And I don't like this. You can only have three fucking icon ability sets. Um, equipped at one time. I think that's really fucking stupid. Like, why can't I just cycle through all of them? Like, I have four. Why the fuck can I not, like, just cycle through all four of them? Like, it's not that fucking hard to press L2 an extra time. 
I don't know. That shit's irritating. Like, I don't like how you have to pick three and that's it. Because, like, I'm never going to fucking use that Col or the Titan abilities now. Like, zero fucking chance. Most of them look like shit anyway. So, I'm just going to completely ignore that fucking icon set. And I'm going to just keep pumping my, uh... Lightning and fire one. Like, that's it, bro. The three accessories make sense, but yeah. Because those are at, like, if you could stack those infinitely, like, that shit would be way too OP. <laughs> like, that shit would be fucking crazy, man. That shit would be really fucking crazy. You'd just be spamming all of your abilities constantly if you just equip the cooldown ones. But yeah, I just keep upgrading my Flames of Rebirth, and that shit is absolutely god tier. Like, Flames of Rebirth is a fucking must. Best ability in the game, and then Judgment uh, Bolt, or whatever, the Electric Power. That one is a must as well, too. Like, pretty much those two abilities... If you can get those off consistently, you're wiping the fucking room in, like, one move. Well, you don't really combo abilities. Abilities are more just, like, either, you know, things designed to um, stagger or DPS while they're staggered. That's the primary function of the abilities. What's your... So, like, the thing is with, like... I found killing, like, the little ads and, like, mini fucking enemies. The non-bosses, I guess I should say. Is what you want to do is, like, get that charge slash ability or whatever. Where you, like, charge your sword, it lights on fire, and then you hit it. Hit the enemy, and they, like, fly up in the air. Like, if you just do that, wait till they drop, and then do that fucking punishment hit. And then do the fucking flame sword again... Punish them, flame sword, punish, flame sword, punish, flames or flame sword, punish. Like, that's easily the best way to kill enemies. Like, you're wasting your time ever using the regular fucking square attack on regular enemies. Unless they have, like, just a tiny ass bit of health left. It's, like, so easy once you figure that shit out, man. But that's what I do like about the game is like there's so many different ways to kind of like exploit it and make it like way fucking easier than actually just like, you know, dodging constantly and shit like that. I don't think the enemies. So this is the thing I had to realize, too. I don't think the enemies have too much health because Final Fantasy enemies have always been tanky. Like every single Final Fantasy game has tanky enemies. It's just this time you're, like, in direct control of combat. So, I don't think it's that big a deal. I mean, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I feel like, is just as tanky. But. I don't know. I mean, think about how long it used to take to beat the bosses in the old turn-based games. It took fucking forever. Yeah, I'm gonna play New Game Plus. That shit will be fun. I'm glad it's there on day one this time. Final Fantasy XV, you had to wait a couple months. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna do New Game Plus. And just fucking crank through that shit. One with a two for my sister since she's a lib. Uh-oh. Dare I say it, hateful cunt. What is it? Oh, yeah, never mind. Uh, Timothy Marco with a five. You know, AMD is a garbage competitor to NVIDIA when they have to pay dev. Or wait, pay so devs don't use DLSS and exclusivity deals? Yep. And guess what the last uh, sponsored titles from uh, AMD were? 
Forspoken, Jedi, Survivor, and I think the Callisto Protocol, too. So all three of those games launched with absolutely fucking horrific PC performance, too. Yeah, I think the Titan abilities are pretty shitty as well. Like, the fucking shield? Like, who fucking wants to use that crap? Oh, also Last of Us 1 PC. Yeah, figures, man. Yeah, that AMD sponsorship is like saying, we made the game run like shit. Now, here's our fucking money. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. God, Emperor Sofa King with the 10 months? Uh, thoughts on Call of Duty making up more than 50% of Sony's annual... That's probably cap. I highly doubt that. That sounds very unrealistic. Like, what? They're 30%? Well, they don't get 30%. I found that out. So, apparently, Bobby Kotick negotiated a revenue split on both Xbox and PlayStation for less than 30%. So, I don't believe that number is true. That sounds really fucking unrealistic. Because, like, let's say they're getting 20% of all Call of Duty sales on PlayStation. You know, and it sells, like, $4 billion worth on PlayStation. Which means... Sony would walk away with 800 million. Sony makes way more than 800 million dollars in revenue. That's very unrealistic. Yeah, Judgment Bolt is OP, dude. That shit is great. I like it, too, because it, like, knocks a huge chunk off the stagger bar, too. Like, that's the nice thing about... What is the fucking Thunder God's name? Like, Rama or whatever the fuck? Um, his abilities, like, take a huge chunk out of the stagger bar. So, you know, it basically makes um, Garuda's abilities worthless, in my opinion. Like, Garuda is a terrible fucking subclass. Like, I'm just waiting for a uh, moveset to swap that shit out with. Like, Garuda's abilities are fucking trash, man. Absolute fucking trash. I didn't even bother getting, like, the ultimate ability for Garuda. Because it just looks garbage. Like, the tornadoes. Yeah, Benedicta really was the only redeeming part of Garuda, man. Well, that's the thing, is Garuda is not a damage class. It's literally just for staggering, but Rama is arguably more effective at that because guess what you're trying not to do when you're trying to stagger a fucking boss? Get close. So Rama allows you to fucking stagger enemies from afar, whereas Garuda forces you to like literally stand there and take fucking damage for like 10 seconds in order to do any sort of fucking stagger damage. It's dumb. So it just literally defeats the entire fucking purpose of the uh, subclass.
Yeah, Phoenix is definitely the best subclass, 100%. Flames of Rebirth and the Phoenix Wing is basically all I fucking use, like in regular encounters. Like, it's just way too good. I don't even bother switching half the time. And the Phoenix Wing recharges really fast, too. Yeah, I've almost finished uh, leveling up my Devil Trigger ability, which is nice, as I like to call it, but yeah. That's what I'm working on right now, is leveling up the, uh, I don't even know what the fuck it's actually called, because I just call it the Devil Trigger, but yeah, whatever the thing is, you click L3 and R3 in to activate, that's what I'm trying to max out right now, because that shit is fucking good. That's once you like get into the habit of just chaining the fuck out of that, you never have to use potions again. Like it's so fucking easy, man. Not to mention when you stagger an enemy, it just fucking melts them. Yeah, limit break. There you go. That's what it's called. But yeah, that shit's way too fucking easy and it heals you like crazy fast, too. Am I skipping Diablo 4? So I was going to get Diablo 4 at one point, but then I heard what they're fucking doing. They're deleting your character every three months. So yeah, I have zero interest in Diablo 4. They're doing that stupid fucking shit that Path of Exile does. Like, they delete your character after each season. So no fucking thanks, man. Like, why am I going to put a bunch of time into a fucking RPG and then lose all of my shit just to have to restart it again? No fucking thank you, man. That is trash. I'm not going to fucking no life Diablo every three months just to maintain the same fucking shit I already have. So, yeah, zero fucking interest in Diablo 4, and that is a real fucking shame because I love Diablo 3, but I'm not going to waste my time leveling up and grinding a character just to fucking lose that character and all of my gear. Like, sorry, it's not the only fucking thing I'm going to be doing in my life, so I'm not going to waste a bunch of time just to fucking lose it all. Yep, you have to make a new character every season inside of the game, which is roughly three months. So, very unfortunate, man. But yeah, that's the reason I never bothered getting into that Path of Exiles game is because they did the same shit where like every fucking three months you lose your character and it's like, bro, I do not have the fucking time 
to sit there and grind in the game non-stop for three fucking months and have none of my progress essentially carry over and I have to completely restart. That is so fucking stupid. No thank you. Like, if it was one of those games, I could just gradually play and gradually grind at and, you know, gradually obtain new gear, that'd be fine, but... Yeah, no fucking thanks, man. I want to be the Barbie of gaming? Sure, why not? Hot and sexy, let's go. Yeah, I heard that Indiana Jones movie is projected to lose like $300 million for Disney. Yeah, Disney's lost money, I think, on almost every single new movie they've put out. Alright, that, like, special flavored Coke is really fucking good. I would recommend it. But yeah, it tastes like fucking blue raspberry and Coke. That's what I'm settling on. hear about Leafy reacting to your reaction, his reaction of you? Yup. I did. I'd imagine there's only so much money BlackRock is willing to put in Disney before they stop? Mm, I don't think so, man. BlackRock has all the money in the world because everybody puts their fucking 401k money in there. It's not even their own money, so they don't give a fuck. White Rock, when? Soon, man. I just need to become a multimillionaire so I can get my uh, banking license. So. Open your wallet and give me all of your monies! Pretty much. But dude, I would love to fucking own a bank. That shit would be so fun, dude. I would love the banking industry. That shit would be absolutely fire. Like, long term, that is, like, what I want to get into. is like, investment banking, mergers and acquisitions, that type of shit. So, yeah, owning a bank is, like, a fucking, I would say, like, dream scenario. I would love to do that. That would be, like, one of my, like, life goals, I would say is like to be like an actual like banker, but own the fucking bank. Like I would love to own an investment bank and do M&A work. That shit would be fun. Oh.
You generation, you live in Maine, bro. You don't even have a fucking opinion that's valid. Griffin has to get a girlfriend first. Not to get a bank. No, I don't. The fuck? Hell no, nah, bro. If I had to choose between getting a girlfriend or getting a bank, I would choose the bank. Because then once I'm balling out, like, I can get anything I want, bro. Like, shit. Dude, the only thing that Maine has is fucking shitty lobsters that are way overhyped. can call the uh, bank White Rock Savings and Trust. WRST. Worst. Rolls off the tongue. AKA worst nightmare for those fucking, you know, pot belly chicken neck bastards, right? I'm an Ellie! Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. There you go, man. We're BlackRock's worst nightmare. White Rock Savings and Trust. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Maine is better than living in Washington, D.C. No one can name one fucking city in Maine, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. No one in this chat besides you, you generation, can actually name one city that is in Maine. I rest my fucking case, dude. Nobody gives a shit about Maine, bro. At least I'm in a place where I say, yeah, I live in, like, the D.C. area. People are like, oh, that's cool. But if you said you live in X city, someone would be like, yo, what the fuck is that? Be like, oh, it's in Maine. You're like, oh, Maine. You got lobsters, right? That's what everyone will default to if you mention you live in Maine is lobsters. That's literally it. Yeah, blue crabs are a Maryland thing. And Virginia, too. The Chesapeake Bay is, like, crabs. Which is Maryland and uh, Virginia. Also oysters. No, I wouldn't allow poor people to put their money in my bank, dude. Because poor people are too fucking uh, volatile with their money. So the thing is, in the early days of me having my bank, I would need to have money in reserve constantly in order to generate like that initial like investment fund. And broke begging bitches that are putting in small deposits are more likely to withdraw their money constantly. So therefore, I would have to constantly buy and sell assets in order to be able to meet their withdrawal requirements. So the more small, like, I guess, accounts that you have, the less, um, 
or I guess the more liquid you have to remain, which means you can't really put money into like high return investments. You have to buy short term, like highly liquid investments. Yeah, no peasants allowed, man. You got to get your money up, not your funny up. Then you can become a member. At least for the beginning. That's why most hedge funds start out only like with a uh, minimum deposit requirement. Like most hedge funds that you go to will have like a withdrawal penalty to discourage people from withdrawing their money because every time somebody withdraws their money, you know, they're forced to sell off part of their holdings in order to meet that withdrawal requirement pretty much. So it like fucks up the whole portfolio if people are constantly pulling money out. So you have like some sort of penalty fee on there to like prevent people from wanting to do it constantly. Dude, I should open the BLM bank and then buy myself a mansion with it. Mischief got his channel back? That's good. At least they reversed it, man. Sometimes YouTube's fucking weird about that type of shit. drip on there. COVID has not left. That's right, man. People are still dying in the streets from COVID and everyone is acting like everything's fine. You know, where's the fucking moral panicking now? About people literally killing each other if they don't wear a mask. Oh, wait, all those dumb fucks shut the hell up, finally. All the fucking over, like, zealous, like, fucking dipshits. Who are, like, literally attacking people for not wanting to wear a fucking mask are now fucking dead silent. Like, fuck them, bro. Yeah, triple mask, guys. Triple mask. I still see people in my area with a fucking mask on, and it's just like, bro, you are fucking retarded. You deserve to die. Like, holy shit, man. It's like, these people are fucking psychos.
Dude, the whole masking shit was the biggest fucking joke from the beginning. Anybody who bought into that shit was fucking stupid. Like, I never bothered wearing a fucking mask. Like, nobody would say shit to me. That's the thing. It's like, most people are so fucking, like, timid that they're afraid of confrontation anyway, so it's not like your fucking store clerk is gonna walk up and be like, oh my god, put your mask on. And if they do, just say, all right, and then walk away. Like, what are they gonna fucking do? Chase you down? No. They're not gonna do shit. So I never bothered with it, man. Yes, there, dude, there's people that got their fucking dogs the COVID vaccine. Like, the vet I take Apollo to, they asked me if I wanted him to get the COVID vaccine, and I just fucking laughed. Like, I literally just audibly fucking laughed in the uh, veterinarian's face when they said, do you want to give him the COVID vaccine? And I just, like, started fucking dying, bro. I was like, oh my god. Are you fucking shitting me? It's like, dude, people are so fucking brainwashed by this shit. It's insane. A fucking dog needing a COVID shot? Like, what the fuck, man? Shit's pathetic. I remember I went to the dentist during COVID and they're like, you need to wear your mask. I'm like, why the fuck am I going to wear my mask when you're literally going to be finger fucking my mouth? I didn't say finger fucking my mouth, but you get the point. It's like, bro, why am I going to fucking wear a mask at the dentist? Are you like fucking retarded? You motherfuckers are going to have my mouth open for a solid hour digging through that shit. No, I'm not like they didn't say anything after that. They're like, well, we need you to swish and spit with peroxide. I'm like, okay. I don't know, man. That shit was so fucking stupid. I'm like, not a... Dude, I'm not fucking putting a mask on. Like, y'all are literally gonna have my mouth open for like an hour. Digging through that shit. Titanic dick with the two of the mainstream media and the power it holds. That's right. People are fucking dumb, man. They just cannot think for themselves anymore. Griffin always swallows. That's right. Gulp.
It was the medical industry trying to get richer? Oh, Bill Gates, bro. Bill Gates conveniently invested in all of these fucking vaccine companies. Ooh, wow, what a shock. I'm telling you, man, Bill Gates is a sick motherfucker. Anybody who thinks that guy is any sort of force of good is a fucking retard. Like, dude, he's behind most of the fucking awful shit that goes on. Yeah, if you jumped off a fucking building and had a fever, they gave you a COVID diagnosis so the hospital could get money. That was the thing, is the federal government was paying hospitals a certain amount of money if they marked the death as COVID. So literally every single fucking hospital said, oh, he died with COVID, which means he died from COVID. Yeah, dying with something is not the definition of dying from something, but apparently to the fucking feds it is, because, you know, money printers go burr. Like, I could shoot myself in the fucking head. <laughs> and if I had a call for COVID-like symptoms, even... If I had symptoms prior to me shooting myself in the fucking head, it would be a death from COVID. Shit's wild, man. Yeah, you will take the 17 boosters, bro. But yeah, it was just a cash... Dude, everything the government does is a cash grab. Like, all fucking government policies, anything they mandate. Like, all it has to do is moving money around. That's it. This was the medical industry's term. Just like green energy is like the fucking, you know, energy sector's turn. Like, that's all the shit's ever about, is money. Money and pleasing the special interest groups. They don't give a fuck about any of this stuff. They're just in it to get their fucking slice, man. That is it. Yeah, thanks for the money, dummies. Yeah, thanks for the positivity, guys. Thanks for that positivity, Brit, but it's not positive enough because there's not a dollar sign in front of it, so... Get fucking wrecked. The fact that regular people believe the good in the government and big corp baffles... Yeah, it's just... <laughs> I don't know, man. The only person looking out for you is yourself. Plain and simple, man. Everybody else has ulterior motives. That's just human nature. I did not want that going. No, not necessarily, man. Your family may not have your best interest at heart. That is not true at all. 
you don't pick your family, so you can have pretty shitty family members. It just depends. That's why they say never mix business and family because, you know, it almost never fucking works out. Yeah, you need to start playing in the major leagues before you start trying to, you know, go up to bat. Pretty much. You gotta have real money to make a difference. CIA with the one? You're broke! You're fucking poor! Barista Craig with the 24 months. Feeling down, low energy, tired of being tired. I'm tired of it all. Fuck, dude, I should put that on the fucking soundboard. That fucking retard uh, basher either, either, either saying, subscribe, donate, I'm sick and tired of being called a fucking rapist. <laughs> that would be a good one to put on there. Um, we'll head down to Craig's Coffee and Pastry. Enjoy the delicious cinnamon infused coffee and glazed donut. Mmm, I love Craig's special glazed fucking bread. AKA my buns, bro. Hell yeah. Well, technically, you can't do anything with family, like get married to them. <laughs> but what if? Introducing anime. Hey. Dude, I would love to see Tipster's OnlyFans bill each month. That shit's probably in the hundreds. JBT with the 149, bro, you're gonna need to gargle those fucking glizzies in order to no longer be. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Get your money up, motherfucker. Oh, there's probably quite a few trans people on OnlyFans, I would imagine. HRT ain't free, man. You generation with the one? We know, man. You're broke! You're fucking poor!
yeah, I just do not get the uh, infatuation with OnlyFans. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me, man. Why are you paying for shit you can literally see for free all over the internet? job at fucking McDonald's cuz that's where you fucking belong Call of Duty broke too much poverty detected is my guess and then Waterboy again with the one <laughs> I just can't do it I can't take this shit no more man you're broke you're fucking poor one with the one you're broke Damn, You're man. fucking poor! Nasty. Dude. There is no nobility in poverty, people. Step your fucking game up. Stop being gilded, domesticated garbage. And Titanic Dick with the 149. You're gonna have to spread them cheeks, boy, if you ever want to stop being a fucking broke begging bitch. That's for fucking real. You're broke! You're fucking poor! And Waterboy with the one? Oh my god. Stop being gilded, domesticated garbage! You're broke! You're fucking poor! Shit's a shame, man. Truly. It breaks my heart. Guys, I need positivity this stream. It's almost the end of the month, and I need to inflate my YouTube paycheck as much as possible in order to pay my bills. And all this derailing the stream is not helping with that. Oh, there we go. Crush your bat with a two. Thank you, man. Thanks for the uh, positive uh, two. The two positivities. <laughs> Can I get a random rich quote? Sure, man. You fucking cock. I know that's one of your favorite words, you right wing asshole. Dare so, I say come it? Come on, hateful cock. Cunt. Ask real fucking questions, cock. And don't be a fucking pussy because you're a bigoted asshole, too. I Fuck think you. Why can I not use my kill streak? the fuck? Ah, oh, shit. Adam22 from No Jumper basically got sneakoed. Did you see what happened? No, what happened? That's the degenerate who fucks his wife on OnlyFans, right? And has a kid. It's not surprising some degenerate shit happened to him, if so. Did he get cucked?
Uh, JBT with the 10, what's up gamers? It's your boy JBT back at it again with a positive donation. That's right, man. Thank you for the 10 positivity. I appreciate it. You know, spreading positive vibes on this uh, very chill Wednesday night stream. You know, that's really going to have a positive impact at the end of this month. Uh, blow me a kiss. Mwah. There you go. Thanks for the positive vibes, bro. Waterboy with the two positivity. I'm spreading that positivity and happiness, Groove. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it, you know? Really goes a long way. He let her smash a BBC in a new porn. Oh my god, bro. That's nasty. Dude, any man that lets his wife have sex with another man is a fucking cuck. That is like one of the most unnatural fucking things. No dude who gives a fuck about his wife, girlfriend, side bitch, whatever, would ever be okay with her fucking another guy. It doesn't even matter if he's cheating on her at that point. If he gave a single fuck about his woman, there is no fucking way he would ever be okay with the fact that she fucked some other random dude. Not to mention allowed her to film it and upload it to the fucking internet. That is fucking pathetic shit. You are a fucking degenerate at that point. Well, he's already a fucking degenerate, but he's even more of a fucking degenerate. He already was whoring his wife out on the internet. Now he's cucking himself on the internet. If you want me to say catch up wrong, then you need to pay me. Because I ain't fucking feeding into your delusions, bro. I ain't British. Beta cucks tell themselves that they are more of a man because they're not insecure. I know, man. Dude, it's just... I don't understand... Well, I do understand. Every fucking aspect of, like, the entertainment industry pushes this degenerate fucking lifestyle. Acting like it's okay. It's fucking not, dude. It is absolutely fucking disgusting. If you gave a singular fuck about your wife, girlfriend, or whatever, you would not be okay with her fucking other dudes. You should not be in a relationship with someone if you don't want to remain faithful to them and you don't care if they remain faithful to you. Like, that is literally the whole point of being in a fucking relationship. Have a fucking side hoe. If that's what you fucking want. Don't have a wife or a girlfriend. And don't have fucking kids with that person either. That's so fucked up, man. I mean, already that kid's gonna grow up with videos of mommy and daddy fucking on the internet all over the place. But, you know. Now the fact that mommy got fucking blacked in front of daddy is like, bruh.
And then that dumb fucking OnlyFans bitch goes, My kids can cry in their Ferrari. It's like, yeah, as they fucking speed down the fucking highway and drive it off the side of a bridge, you're right, they will be crying in their Ferrari. Because no amount of money is going to take the image of mommy getting fucked by five different guys at one time out of their minds. Dude, the cope is so fucking strong. The cope is so fucking strong. Guess who else is horrified by the fact that their kids get to see the fucking sex tape all over the internet? The Kardashians! Well, guess what? Kim Kardashian's kids can definitely afford to cry in a Ferrari, but guess what? She's fucking horrified by the idea that they saw the fucking porn ad while playing Roblox. Because guess what? No amount of money can erase that fucking mental image. New generation with the two Adam 22 shared his girl for reparations. Bruh. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, dude. That shit's pathetic. These people are fucking degenerates, man. Yeah, imagine seeing your first porn video and it's literally your fucking mom. The amount of, like, mental damage that's gonna do is insane. Like, that is fucking crazy, man. No child should ever have to fucking experience that shit. Griffin, have you heard that Keffels got cucked and she is... What the fuck? I thought Keffels didn't have a dick anymore. How did that happen? What happened to Keffel's dick? It got inverted, Brett. It got inverted and turned into a mangina. Well, dude, it's probably no longer a fake voice, but I guarantee you Keffel's went to fucking speech therapy to learn that voice. It's like the gay voice. 
No one is actually born with the fucking gay voice. They force themselves to speak like that for so long it becomes natural. It's like an accent. If you live in a certain region long enough, you'll pick up on an accent. Because if you practice speaking that way long enough, you know, it becomes like second nature. Like, dude, I have, like, gay family members, and you would never be able to tell they're fucking gay. Like, they talk completely fucking normal. They're not like, oh, yeah, girl, slay. Like, none of them talk like that. They just talk like fucking normal people. So, that's the thing, is the gay voice is 100% learned. 100% fucking learned. Does my lesbian aunt talk nor- Nah, dude, she sounds like a fucking, uh, 400 pound linebacker. She's like, yo, what's up, bro? No. Yeah, she talks normally. No, she sounds like some fucking roided out fucking, uh... I don't know, meathead. Driven has the gay gene? Nah, -uh, bro. I don't have it. I promise. I took a genetics test. They couldn't find it. Well, some fucking bodybuilders have very light voices, which is very funny because the fucking hormones fuck with their, uh, you know, hormones. Because <laughs> that's the thing is like a bunch of them will take like TRT and that type of shit to like bulk. But then when they stop taking it, their body no longer naturally produces testosterone. So they have like these really light and squeaky voices as a result because they're no longer pumping their body full of testosterone. But their body's also accustomed to not producing it, so they get like these really squeaky high-pitched voices sometimes. It's fucking funny. AKA guys, just don't fuck with your genetics. Don't fuck with your fucking like chemical balance or any of that shit. Just be fucking like normal the way you were born. It's not that hard. It ain't worth it. Don't pump a bunch of fucking artificial shit into your body. Scotty Man with the five, you gonna watch Synthetic Man's new video? Yup. I guess he didn't like that. Uh, well, also, let's hope the FTC... I think they will lose. But I don't think Synthetic Man disliked the game. I think it's more so he disliked the amount of cutscenes, which I kind of agree with. There's way too much fucking dialogue in unnecessary situations. Like, if all the dialogue was, like, the pre-boss fight type material, and, like, those were the majority of the cutscenes, or, like, actual consequential, sh like, consequential shit, I think it'd be fine to have like a cutscene heavy game, but there's a lot of dialogue sequences that are really fucking unnecessary. So I think that's a valid complaint. I don't know, I think also what's helping too with me is like I'm not like playing it in big bursts. Like I'm playing it for like an hour or two at a time. So it doesn't really feel like I'm like watching a five hour movie or something, you know what I mean? It's like I'm really splitting up the experience, so that also probably will change your perception of how bad the like fucking overwhelming dialogue is. But yeah, I think like the too much dialogue and cutscenes complaint is 100% valid.
Like, even for a JRPG, it is a little excessive. Well, it's a longer game than God of War. I think Final Fantasy 16 is what? Like a 50 hour game? I don't fucking know. I haven't beaten it. But it's like, I think, double the length of God of War, if not longer, so. God of War Ragnarok, I think, is only like 15 to 20 hours, right? It's pretty short. It's like a DLC. Yeah, all Final Fantasy games are dialogue heavy, but the gameplay to cutscene ratio does feel a little bit off in this game. Like, you know, I don't know, like combat sequences are not very lengthy, if that makes sense, in between cutscenes. So it's not like you're like doing a fuck ton of dialogue and then you have like an hour or two of straight combat. It's like you have a bunch of dialogue and shit and then you have like 20 minutes of combat. I think that's the like big difference is like the gameplay is really good, but it's like really, it's like really short bursts. If they found a way to balance it better to where there's more combat, and even if there's dialogue during the combat, that would be fine. But the combat's kind of too few and far between, I feel like, when it comes to like the actual game. And I think that's the issue. So I think it's a valid complaint, personally. The one thing I will say, though, at least Final Fantasy 16's cutscenes and dialogue are interesting to me. So that's kind of where I can make an exception, I feel like. As long as I'm enjoying the actual game itself and, like, the story and the actual dialogue and shit and finding it interesting, I can deal with it. Would I prefer if there was less? Yes. But it's not something like God of War 2018 when it's, like, literally my feelings, my feelings, my violence bad you know, my son, like all that type of crap. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's a difference between shitty cutscenes and good cutscenes. Like all of the uh, political intrigue and like, you know, when they do the cutscenes of like the different kingdoms and that type of shit, like that stuff's fucking fire, man. Like I really enjoy that aspect of it. Like, this feels like Final Fantasy, like, basically doing their take on Game of Thrones in, like, the best ways when the cutscenes are done right. So I feel like that's handled really fucking well. But it's like, when you're talking to side characters and shit, there's just, like, unnecessary fucking sequences of dialogue and shit. It's like, okay, this really didn't need to fucking be, like, this extended. Like, I don't need to talk to the guy who wants me to go pick up fucking flowers for him for 20 minutes. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I would say overall, Final Fantasy 16 is really fucking solid. And the nice thing is, too, is if you do New Game Plus, like your second playthrough, you can just skip all the cutscenes because you already know what the fuck's going to happen anyway, so. Yeah, once Game of Thrones, like, ditched the books, it went to shit. 
Dude, that one season where, uh, what's her fucking name? Like, Arya Stark and the fucking, you know, like, masks and shit. Like, that was, like, the worst fucking part of that entire series. That shit fucking blew. I hated her character, man. Absolutely fucking hated her character. Like, Game of Thrones literally became game of fucking, uh, girl bosses at the end. It was really fucking shitty. Like, Game of Thrones made the most obvious fucking transition ever. Like, the first half of the series, you have all these really fucking interesting male characters that are really fucking well-developed. You know, they all have, like, their unique fucking goals and aspirations and tactics and, you know, plots and all this type of shit. Then right about halfway through, it starts transitioning into fucking girl boss. And it's just fucking horrible, dude. It's fucking horrible. Like, every single female character in that show towards the end is so fucking shittily written. And they're like, oh, I'm a woman. You have to respect me. I'm a fucking badass because I'm a girl. Like, it's so fucking bad, dude. It's so... F you go from, like, these extremely well-written and intricate characters to, like, the generic fucking girl boss number 15. And it's, like, four of them all, like, at the same time. And that is literally the final seasons of, like, Game of Thrones. The Battle of the Girl Bosses, or Game of Girl Bosses, bro. Like, that's literally what it fucking is. And then what do they fucking end the series that's all about, you know, kings and kingdoms and rulers? What happens? Mug democracy. Like, you just, you literally can't get any more fucking cringe than that shit, man. Democracy is our strength, guys. In a show about kings and fucking wars and dragons and shit. We gotta establish a democracy. It's like, shut the fuck up, dude. It's just so fucking cringe. Yeah, and then the fucking cripple gets to be king. Like, what? He can't even stand up for his fucking kingdom. Bruh. <laughs> Literally. Dude, John should have been king. John was the only fucking choice to be king. The fact that they did not give him the throne is like the dumbest fucking writing on planet Earth. Like the only character in that entire fucking series that deserved to be king was John. That was it. That was literally the found... You can literally tell that was the intention from the very fucking beginning of that series. Is that John was supposed to be the king. Because he's the one that didn't fucking expect it, wasn't actively fighting for it, and literally put the lives of everyone else before himself and his own family and personal aspirations. Like, he literally is like, basically... You know, not to get fucking religious, but he's, like, basically the Christ-like figure, you know? He dies and is resurrected to come back and save humanity kind of thing, you know? Like, he literally is set up to be the fucking ruler, pretty much. And he was, like, from the old family and the new family. It's like, bro. It was so fucking obvious. But nah, dude. Cripple kid. Democracy.
And then I love the thing too is like they made uh, Daenerys like go fucking crazy like in the pe like the last few episodes out of nowhere. It's like the entire fucking series like she's like the fucking badass who does everything right, that's fair, that helps people. Then all of a sudden the fucking switch gets flipped because they're like, oh fuck, we, we forgot to develop this character. Now she's fucking crazy. And then in the last few episodes, she somehow becomes like literal, like fucking, uh, you know, female Hitler pretty much. And it's like, bro, what the fu- I, I don't know, man. That show is so fucking bad towards the end. That show got fucking horrible at the end. Yep, Jamie and Cersei being killed by bricks, man. So Raging Wolf of the Five, watch man threatens family with knife at public park. It's the first video and skip the 928. All right, man. Play DSP. I'll pull it up in a minute. And no to bones of the five, yo, Griff. Just want to say hi. Also, you can watch Synthetic Man's video. Yep. Well, with the two, we was queens and shit for real. Well, it's not even that, bro. It's just like it becomes boss babe the fucking franchise. And it's like so fucking cringe. It's like you got Cersei, you have Arya, you have, um, what's the fucking redhead? I don't remember her fucking name, because she's annoying as shit. Um, I don't remember her name, because I don't fucking care about her. Uh, then you had Daenerys, and then there was another one, too. Shit. Yeah, Sansa. But it's like, yeah, literally it becomes the game of the fucking girl boss. That was a game of girl boss. And it's like, bruh, what the fuck happened to this show? Lord Ponan invested with the two, wasn't he the one with the blood, right? To yep, he was. And Lord Ponan invested with the five, I knew they didn't care after the Starbucks cup got lost. Like, yeah, that shit was weak as fuck, man. How do you even miss that? Like, that's fucking crazy. Nobody saw a fucking cup sitting there. They're like, oh, we just gotta get the shit finished, man. We ain't reshooting this. And groovy with the two, John's arc was killed. Jamie's character was murked. Yup. 100%, man. But hey, man, at least we got mud democracy, right? Mud democracy prevails.
Titanic dick with the two? Me who never watched Game of Thrones in the first place? Yeah, when I was in uh, high school, like, that's when it was at, like, the peak of its popularity, so... I was watching that shit in real time, man. That's what made it even fucking worse. It was like, I was current on it. I never... Dude, I never fucking watched the final season. I just, like, read the fucking plot synopsis. Uh-oh. But yeah, Game of Thrones was really fucking good for what it was until they ruined it. That's like one of those case... I mean, it's like the Disney effect, man. They take amazing source material and then try to adapt it their own fucking way and completely fucking ruin it. It's the Disney effect, pretty much. I mean, look at how they butchered the fucking Lord of the Rings over at Amazon, bro. It's like all these fucking Hollywood writers have zero fucking talent. At fucking all. They're just talentless fucking hacks masquerading as, you know, whatever the fuck they want to call themselves. I haven't finished Final Fantasy 16. I'm right before the second Titan fight. So. 
I already beat like him the first time and now I have to beat him the second time. Lord Kupka. Or should I say Cuck? Because Benedicta got dicked down by many a man other than him. Bruh. Dude, the first phase was fucking obnoxious. Like, that fucking retard kept spamming the shit out of me. Like, you barely had any fucking breathing room. The, like, first time you fight him was, like, fucking ass, bruh. That little fucking retard was, like, spedding the fuck out all over the fucking arena. Like, that's the thing that's so disappointing about the Titan subclass, is like... Fucking Kupka's moveset is so fucking badass. But then the actual abilities you get with the Titan subclass are so fucking mid. Like, they're trash, dude. Like, the abilities should have been, like, his ability to, like, you know, make himself have, like, the fucking stone armor. That should have been the defensive ability, not a fucking shield. And then the other ability should have been the thing where he does, like, the arms that, like, swing out in front of you. I don't know why the fuck they didn't do that. And then just, like, a normal fucking shockwave kind of thing. But no, it's, like, just dog shit. All right, but let's be honest here, Rocksteady. Who would not simp over Benedicta, bro? Like, that shit would be some wild times. She'd get Benedict down. Amen, dude. Amen. Griffin, the guy that left the comment about Starfield is the same dude who Oh, same profile? Oh, shit, really? Interesting, man. So he's a DSP simp, and he leaves like this fucking awful conspiracy theory about Starfield on my video. Interesting. I'm surprised he doesn't call uh, DSP woke, bro. Titanic dick with the two. Griffin likes Aryans. Are you hiding something? Well, my favorite Final Fantasy girl is Aerith, so keep that in mind. But in Final Fantasy 16, it's Benedicta, bro. If Benedicta has, like, brown hair, perfect. Or, like, just slightly darker blonde hair, perfect, bro. So, but she's the best we got.
Yeah, DSP only has like seven main donors, bro. Like that's it. Everybody else is this like mainly just there to hate watch. Or watch the fucking train wreck. Like yeah, he only has like five or six people that actually like unironically donate to him. It's pretty sad, dude. Like, dude, part of me wants the fucking, uh, you know, train crash to finally occur, but it's like, at the same time, it's like endless entertainment, dude. Oh, Ryan pulled up with the 100 today? Uh-oh, I guess the SSI check fucking cleared. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get rid of my game pass as well, too. There ain't shit in there I wanna play either. Wait, I'm married? Fuck! When did that happen? And is she hot? Probably not. I can't find the comment of the Starfield guy. I think I have it saved now. Should be at least. Bro, okay, it's saved this time. Thank God. Here, if you want to screenshot it. It'll be uh, up on the screen. Oh, that's kind of hard to screenshot. There, that's better. Yo, what the fuck? Did it not ca Why the fuck did- Oh my god, it cropped. Hold on. Dude, fuck this shit. Why is this, like, screenshot giving me so much trouble, dude? Like, this is the second fucking time. That it's given me shit. Give me a second. I'm gonna get it. This is the second fucking time it's shut. Like, it's gotten fucked up. Hold on. Dude, I swear, like, they don't want me to screenshot this comment. There's some powerful people that don't want this getting out there, I guess. I don't know, man. All right, let's see. Starfield. Conspiracy PNG. Yes, replace. All right, let me see if it works now. Oh, fuck, it zoomed in all my tabs? All right, there we go. Now it's good. There you are. If you want to screenshot it, there you go. Yeah, that shit was wild, man. That was a wild fucking comment. The sanest DSP support? Yeah, I don't know, dude. It's definitely interesting, that's for sure. Daryl Zone with a two? You sound like DSP. Are you DSP's little brother? That's right, man. Open your wallet and give me all of your monies. Dude, I just need to stop paying for anything gaming related, guys. Honestly. I just need to remove the evil from my life. It's the devil's work. 
At least I can be the same as what I am in real life, a virgin. Hell yeah, man. Dude, I honestly have zero desire to buy, like, any games nowadays. It's kind of sad. Like, Final Fantasy 16 was about it. What about Mario? I'm not buying Mario. Dude, I just feel like such a cheap ass these days. I really just don't want to spend money on anything right now. I just want to hoard it all, bro. Brittany Dick with the two. Play Virgin with Rage since we're both... Well, I can't play it now because I'm not lonely. Shouldn't have added that last part, Brick, because then I could have played it, but I can't play it because then it would mean that I'm lonely, which I'm not. I have never felt lonely. Probably in the past 10 years. I don't get lonely. Dude, I don't, like, get lonely. Like, I have no problem being by myself. I have never been the type where it's like, oh my god, bro, I'm so fucking lonely. I've never needed other people to be around me to be happy. Not that I've ever been happy anyway, but you get the point. projecting your wishes onto me like I'm sorry we're not in the same boat it's okay if anything the fact that you still are what you are is a positive to most men but you know if it really bothers you that much put yourself out there you know do something about it you fucking cock Britt will pro wait, Britt will find a man before you're right, because I ain't looking for one. 
You are absolutely correct, man. Absolutely correct. Cosme with the two? Love that damn soundboard. You fucking cuck! I know that's one of your favorite words, you right-wing asshole! Say- Come on, cuck! Ask real fucking questions, cuck! And don't be a fucking pussy, because you're a bigoted asshole too! I Fuck think you! The anger, man. Oh my god. The rage, you can feel it. Alright, I'll do one more match, then we'll uh, do videos. We'll start off with the Synthetic Man's Final Fantasy 16 review. And I Siler with the 10. Start at 2 to 2.30 long. Copyright for sure, but it gets the point across. If you can't watch longer, it's awesome. Yep, will do, man. Check it out. No, it's not that I like movie games. I like particular movie games. It's like how I say I don't like platformers with like a few exceptions. It's kind of like that. Well, Mario Kart 8 is definitely better than modern Halo and Gears, but... Yeah, I like the original Last of Us. That's a pretty decent game. I also like Uncharted 3.
I doubt the new Metroid Prime will have multiplayer. That game has been in development hell so long, I don't think that's going to happen. should be good dude my computer just started shutting down man like literally it just started saying shutting down and I like spammed the fuck out of my escape key so I don't know what the fuck happened but yeah I don't know if Windows like tried to do an auto update or some gay shit like that but yeah I just spammed the fuck out of my escape key and it stopped, so I, I preserved it. Otherwise, it would have been a couple minutes. But yeah, we're good. Dude, it probably is. I bet that screenshot got deleted now. Let me check. <laughs> Yo, for real. Let's see. Nope, the screenshot's still okay. It's still there. Oh my god, bro. I don't know what the fuck's up, man. Because I got the... But also, the, what's interesting is it said OBS has crashed after I spammed the escape key after it said shutting down, and it's the only program that closed. So I'm wondering if it was something with fucking OBS glitching the fuck out. That's somehow my computer got like a fucking input to like restart. I don't know. Because like that's the only thing. Because like my fucking game's still running even though it said shutting down. I didn't lose internet connection or anything like that. It was literally just OBS that closed and had a fucking issue, so I'm wondering if that's what it was. Shit's weird, bro. I don't know. We got the fucking machine elves striking back. They're mad that I haven't taken enough psychedelics to communicate with them. So they're trying to reach out, bro. The machine elves want their voice heard, I guess. I don't fucking know, man. And I saw that with the two PC heard the base talk. Something like that, man. I don't know. Microsoft is trying to shut me down because I'm talking shit about Bill Gates. There you go. That's probably it. They don't want me talking shit about Bill Gates. HTM101 with the two. Can we watch the Grimace Shake compilation? I have no idea what the fuck that is. If we have time. I, like, zero fucking idea what that is. So, it just depends on how we're doing on time, but no clue what that is, bro. What is a Grimace Shake compilation? A TikTok meme? Mm, I don't know. We'll see. That'll be something if time permits.
Bill Gates loves Epstein Island. Yes, he does, man. Allegedly, after all. Even though he's been there multiple times. I hear he loves the staff. You know, that's what keeps him coming back. The wonderful workers who work there. You know, they really make the experience very memorable for our buddy Bill. That's why he always returns as frequently as possible. Sometimes the staff is even on the plane to greet him, so he doesn't even have to wait to get to the island. Dude, Stephen Hawking was a fucking psyop. You can't convince me otherwise. There's no fucking way people actually believe that fucking mouth-drooling retard had anything useful to say, right? He 100% was a government plant. You'll never convince me otherwise, so don't even try. Like, how the fuck do we actually know whatever fucking thing was coming out of his Bluetooth speaker was actually him, man? That's what I'm saying, like... There's no fucking way to actually know. And why was he getting tuggies from little kids on Epstein's Island, too? I don't know. One with the two, I'm a griffin pay pig. I like giving you my monies, and I like you giving me my money. Or, well, I guess your monies, but now they're mine. Uh-oh. Hold on, I gotta reopen my stream deck. I guess that died, too. Let's see if it works now. Open your wallet and give me all of your monies. Hell yeah. Yes, give me your life savings, man. Give me all the monies. It's never enough. I need it all. Give me money! 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 I need all that positivity in order to uh, pay my bills next month. Nah, sometimes the Stream Deck software just needs to be reopened to like refresh it. That's normal. That happens all the time. You just have to open it and close it, and then you're good. That's not a big deal. <laughs> Griffin stopped working and partied all his money away. So give it all now. That's right, man. I need to become a pro raver again, guys. I want to fucking toss ketamine pills into a stripper's asshole. Drag over a tube tab. Dark. Close window. Dude, Apollo is a filthy little money grubbing piece of shit. You're absolutely right, bro. Like, I started, I bought like these little fucking baby bell cheese wheels or whatever the fuck and every time I open one this little bitch comes running up to me like acting like I'm gonna give it to him and it's like bruh hell nah that shit's mine 
Dude, what the fuck is that? That is gross looking. What the fuck is wrong with her lips? Final Fantasy 16. So you just play skill up? Okay. Good. It's just a clip. I was about to say, if there's like a whole segment of skill ups video, I'm just going to skip that. Final Fantasy 16's world, Valstia, it feels like you could fit it in a thimble, and there isn't a square inch of it worth dismounting to see. Combined with the poor side quest, the uneven pacing of the main quest, the repetitiveness of the core mission design, and the over-reliance on cutscenes, Final Fantasy 16 is a real slog, and as good as its combat is, it's not nearly good enough to save it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Skill Up was right. Despite having gained the nickname Shill Up on this channel over the last couple of years, I've got to say, he gave a very fair review of this game, very critical, and I pretty much agree with about 90% of his points. I feel like there's almost no point to me reviewing this myself. You could probably just check out his review. That being said, I did think of several things he didn't quite cover or I don't quite agree with, and I'm sure most of you don't even watch Skill Up and probably are not going to bother watching his video, so True. I figured I might as well still make this anyway. But if you're one of those people who dislikes every video I make and say, I'm way too critical on video games, I hate every modern game, old, good, new, bad, just know that one of the biggest reviewers on this platform agrees with pretty much everything I'm about to say here. Now on to Final Fantasy 16 itself. If you're anything like me and thought that God of War Ragnarok and many other Sony games have way too many cutscenes, way too many moments where the game takes away control from you, do not buy this game. Period. It doesn't matter how good you think the gameplay is, it is not worth full price to anyone if you're just here for the Devil May Cry-esque combat. Yep, because see, these are like the segments that should not be this fucking drawn out. Like, who the fuck cares about this bitch, bro? Like, she's not important to the story at all. You literally just go to her to do a bunch of generic fucking activities. Like, yeah, I agree. These type of scenes should 100% be cut out. Because you're not going to be in combat for over 75% of this game. That is worse than God of War Ragnarok, legitimately. And just like God of War, it's one of the most boring games I've ever played. Now, is the combat good? Yes, it is. But does that mean it is truly innovative, breaks new boundaries, is a unique experience, or, if you're not expecting that, does it at least improve on the Devil May Cry formula? Well, I'm not exactly the best person to give you the answer to the latter part of that question, because I still have not gotten around to playing any of the DMC games. Yes, I know, really? I need to play them, I will get around. Yeah, he really should play those, what the fuck? ...to it eventually, I promise. But I have played similar hack and slash games to DMC before, whether it be God of War or Bayonetta or Metal Gear Rising. Yeah, none of them are exactly the same, but whatever. It doesn't matter for the sake of this review. Trust me, the combat has a fatal flaw that will likely turn off even the biggest DMC enthusiasts. And so because this game was so comically boring with so few gameplay sections and some of the worst level design I've seen, especially from an extremely high budget game, I could not bear to finish this. So you can consider this an impressions review of the first 18 hours of gameplay. So I was roughly about halfway into the game, though some sources report this being up to 50 hours long, but I started skipping side quests, so 30 is more realistic. And trust me, there's a reason I skipped the side quests too. So this has been another unnecessarily long intro. Let's get into the gameplay. The combat is easily the best part of this game and the only reason you should even consider purchasing it. I will try to cover the most positive aspects and talk about the issues at the end. So similar to a lot of character action games, the main appeal of combat like this is to string as long a combo as possible 
to deal maximum damage and juggle an enemy so they can't hit you back. You know, you've probably played a game like this before. And despite the initial simplicity that the combat seems to have, especially for the first like five or six hours of the game, this game the more is abilities fun to play, you obtain, man. the more it opens up and the more different attacks you can string together. And it feels pretty damn satisfying, especially specifically your iconic abilities deal massive damage and in a lot of cases can further extend your combo. Now to get into a minor issue I have with this already, I think your basic attack moveset is way too simplistic. Yeah. You have a basic four hit slash combo. On triangle, you can shoot a fireball or whatever icon you currently have equipped. You You'll never fucking use that fireball ability past the first like 10 hours though. Shoot their element out. You can charge a slash or a fireball. It's way too weak. And you can also perform what's called magic burst, where you mix any number of magic attacks in between your sword swings. If you press square and X at the same time, you can do a lunge. And if you perform that same move in the air, you do a downward thrust, which does more damage based on how high in the air you are. And on circle, based on what icon you have equipped, you also have a special move unique to each one of the elements. Now that might sound like a decent amount of moves, but for roughly the first five hours of the game, and yes, I'm including cutscenes in that number, all you have is the Phoenix icon, which means that the combat in the beginning of this game is super fucking boring after mm -hmm. the first hour. It takes way too yep. long for this game to give you new abilities, and even once you get Garuda, and then you have access to two more equipable abilities, and you also get Torval the dog who can knock enemies into the air. Yes, the combat starts getting pretty good at that point and more interesting, but even then, you have another four or five hours until you get this game's version of Devil Trigger, which is the limit break, which makes all your basic attack combos do significantly more damage. They can chain infinitely instead of just being stuck as a four hit combo and you regenerate health as you hit enemies. So I've got no real complaints about the limit break to be clear. I actually like that quite a bit. But even so, between that time when you get Garuda's abilities and get limit break is a long fucking stretch. Dude. I agree. And another issue is the fact that you're stuck with that basic four hit combo for the entire game. Yep. There are no other weapons. The long sword is the only weapon and you just get versions with higher stats. They don't even have elements. There's no status resistances in this game. There and the other thing that's irritating too, so like that weapon he just crafted, the Levin Bolt. Like, this is literally the best weapon in the game, quote-unquote. Like, it's the elemental weapon that you get from fusing the materials you get from uh, the different icons. Like, bro, I already upgraded it three times, and that's it. But then after that, you can craft, like, generic swords. I think the Platinum Sword is what it's called, which is better than this fucking Levin Bolt. Which the Levin Bolt is literally made from like the icon fragments you get from beating the bosses. Like it's really fucking weird. I don't know. That was like an odd choice. Your stats. They don't even have elements. There's no status resistances in this game. There's no status ailments as far as I can tell either. Especially not on the player side. You can't poison anybody or put them to sleep or freeze them or mind control them to attack their enemies or really anything interesting at all. You don't get any direct control over party members except for the dog. So the party members only exist to randomly throw out an attack every once in a while. It doesn't really factor into combat in any way. This doesn't feel like an RPG by any stretch. Let's be clear. All of the equipment is just based on basic stats. The only accessories that are interesting are the ones that reduce the cooldown to your abilities. And the skill tree is super basic too, not even worth covering on any level. But to get back to the combo system, even if you do end up stringing a cool combo together without abilities, your basic moves do so much less damage than abilities that yep. it seems completely fucking pointless. And the thing you need to do is not even use the fucking basic combo. All you have to do is get the ability where you can hold down square, it makes your sword like burst into flames, and then you slam the ground, the enemy goes flying, then you walk over to him outside of a combo and do like the Punisher. Then you charge your fucking sword again, hit them, wait till they hit the ground, do another Punisher. Rinse and repeat. That is the effective combat method in between ability recharges. 
Otherwise, you're just wasting your fucking time. And that's what I believe to be the fatal flaw of this combat system. You can do a lot of cool stuff, string a lot of cool moves together, especially once you get the dog, Torval. He can launch enemies in the air. He can attack them with you. And stringing together these combos is more difficult than it seems. So when you pull it off, it does feel a little bit rewarding, but not nearly enough because the damage just does not compare to the ability damage. And you could just spam all six of your abilities. See that Punisher right there? That's all you need to do in this game. To the ability damage. And you could just... So, like, you see how he, like, knocked them all down? What you would do... Spam walk all up, six of punish. your abilities. Then you would hold down square. Your sword lights on fire, slams the ground, would launch all of them up into the air again, onto the ground... And then you just do another Punisher. That is the most effective way to like deal damage in this game. You don't want to combo. Abilities back to back, because once you have lightning, you've got six equipped abilities at that point. The stuff that actually takes skill in this game doesn't matter because basic attacks do so much less damage than abilities. And on that same line, there's no combo meter. So you're not rewarded in that way either. You're not graded after or during combat. So realistically, someone could hit square, 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 triangle the entire fucking game just using abilities when they come off cooldown, and they're doing almost as much damage as you are. Now here's the thing, you can definitely still have fun with this game without caring about the combos. Honestly, I had more fun when I was just doing whatever I knew I could do reliably. Because it's just fun to hit enemies in this game. It has good sound design, it has a bunch of over-the-top particle effects everywhere. And the basic enemy types die very quickly, so that makes you feel powerful. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the bosses. Which at first I felt a bit conflicted about, but the further you get into the game, the bosses get better and better, more fun, more over the top. None of them are particularly difficult. This certainly is no Souls game, no Ninja Gaiden. I actually only died two times over the course of 18 hours, and one of those times was because I got killed instantly in one hit by an exploding fireball. Uh, actually, I've never died once, so ha ha ha, I'm better. All guy. You can get hit about seven or eight times without dying, and you're given seven heals. And like I said earlier, Actually, Limit Break nine. regenerates your health when you hit enemies. But a boss doesn't have to be challenging to be fun. This game does spectacle combat extremely well. This is one of the few times I've seen a game in recent years where both the player and the bosses can do spectacular over-the-top attacks. And dodging, which is something I haven't mentioned up until now, itself feels very satisfying. If you dodge right before an enemy hits you, you get a strong counterattack on square or triangle. And you can also parry enemies, which is significantly more difficult, but if you attack the moment an enemy is about to hit you and your sword collides with their attack, you deflect the attack and time slows down the parry, you a few seconds dude, to get free hit. The parry feels completely fucking random. Like, all of a sudden, it'll just, like, take effect when I'm playing, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? It's on the enemy, which is the only way to stun bosses without depleting their stagger meter. That's an important thing, because I do have one minor issue with these boss battles, and that is their extreme super armor. While a boss's stagger meter is full, it will super armor through any of your attacks, including your strongest iconic abilities. The stagger meter is... Ah, uh, that's not entirely true. Your icon abilities still do a pretty decent chunk. Depleted by will damage, all attacks do some amount of will damage, but elemental attacks deal more than physical attacks. So you can either use your basic projectile attacks or more likely you're going to use your icon abilities which do a shocking amount of stagger damage. But the only problem with that is due to their long cooldowns you're more likely to want to save them for when you deplete the stagger meter. And so despite their varied attacks... Yeah, what I've found works best is you want to save your icon abilities for when the stagger meter's full get the stagger meter down, use your limit break. By the time they're unstaggered, your icon abilities have recharged, which the icon abilities directly recharge your fucking limit break. And then, you know, once you use all the icon abilities, 
he's staggered again. Then you can use limit break to DPS, rinse and repeat. That's kind of the loop you're looking to do. But yeah. The nature of every boss battle in this game is exactly the same. Because of their super armor, the only way to stagger them is to deplete their stagger meter to half, which opens them up for a couple seconds. And using Garuda's circle ability, you can gain another couple seconds to deal damage by pulling them to the ground, which has a unique animation for each boss, which I'll definitely give the developers credit on that one. That's pretty satisfying. And then when you deplete the stagger meter all the way, you do vastly increased damage, and the more hits you deal on an opponent, it builds up a combo multiplier, and that's where you deal the vast majority of the damage on the boss. Now, for those of you who play MMOs, that is a familiar mechanic to many of you, I'm sure. That the bulk of your damage is done when the boss is in a vulnerable phase. The thing is, that's not really satisfying for action game combat, especially when there's no real gimmicks to these bosses. I don't know. I don't mind it. I think it's actually kind of fun because it makes you play the boss fight very differently. It's like, you know, it makes it it makes it a lot more strategic, let's say, because like it makes you think about, well, which ability do I want to use right now to break his stagger meter? Which ability do I want to save for when the stagger meter is broken? If I use this now and then he gets staggered and I use my limit break. Will I have enough time for the ability to recharge? So when he gets back up and the stagger meter's full again, I can spam that right off the bat. Like, I don't know. I think it's kind of, I think it adds more, um, what do you call it? Depth to the combat. Cause you have to kind of approach, um, using your different abilities with that in mind. So I don't know, man. I think it's kind of a mixed thing. It just depends on what you like, probably, which is why, you know, game reviews, subjective, glorified opinion. Uh, I saw that with the five is Halo Legends. Yeah, that's that anime, right? Probably. Um, It's an episode that's extremely based. It's called Prototype. It's, yeah, I would imagine that's copyright because I'm pretty sure they released that shit on DVD. And the Abyss with the 20, can I get a big shout out to the Archive channel? You a real one, whoever runs it. Big ups. Gaming. Shout out to the Archive channel. And Vesnia with the 5, Synthetic Man encapsulates how I feel about this game. This game is just Ragnarok, but with weeb writing... Eh, I wouldn't say that. And even more cutscenes, which is an L. I wouldn't say it's weeb, personally. I think the story is way more interesting than Ragnarok, personally. And I think that's the biggest advantage it has. But, yeah, it's definitely heavy on the cutscenes and dialogue. 100%. I think this shit's way fucking better than Ragnarok, story-wise. Bosses, it's all about just learning their movesets and dodging or parrying a court. How is the story anime as fuck, bro? Dude, the story is like literally a fucking copy and paste of Game of Thrones, my guy. Like, it literally is a fucking copy paste of Game of Thrones with like magic. Like, you literally have these multiple different kingdoms fighting over a fucking area of land. You literally have, like, this old enemy that's, like, waiting behind the wall, quote-unquote, to make a strike. You know, there's an impending doom, which is, like, the blight. So, yeah, I don't fucking know, man. I would say it's more like Game of Thrones than fucking anime, my guy. Yeah, Jon Snow with Ghost, pretty much. Accordingly. That being said, the bosses were certainly the highlight of this game. Even the mini bosses were pretty good, even though a few of them repeat several times over the course of the game. It's just a shame that the bosses discourage you using long combos even more than normal enemies do, because the human-sized bosses are too small to even be hit by your air combos, and air combos are fun. They always are in these action games. 
And even in the case of the large ones, when you're in the actual damage phase when their stagger meter is down, the most efficient way of killing the boss is just spamming all of your high damage abilities back to back. And that's really the crux of my issue with this. Ability spam is where all of your damage comes from, as I said earlier. Yes, you're still encouraged to use normal moves to build up that damage multiplier first, and you can use Limit Break to make your standard strikes do much more damage, which of course you're going to do. But like God of War Ragnarok, it becomes more and more about spamming runic attacks. Once you have six runic attacks, in this game's case abilities, it's much more beneficial to just spam those back to back. That being said, the boss fights are fun. My complaints about them are really minor, and I'm glad that there's so many of them. So the combat remained interesting for my entire playtime, and ultimately was not my major problem with this game. Now before we move on to the next section, I want to briefly talk about the kaiju battles. This is something that is more about spectacle than it is yep. about gameplay. The kaiju battles are fine, I think. The first two were way too simplistic and lasted too long. But when you get to the third kaiju fight, you're actually given full control of Ifrit, and he actually kind of controls like Clive, but way more simplistic. And that battle, the third battle, was actually pretty damn fun. I don't have any complaints. Yes, it was easy, but it's supposed to be like a glorified gameplay cutscene hybrid, and I'd say it serves that purpose perfectly. It's supposed to weave together gameplay and narrative, and it was one of the few times in this game that I think it was done effectively. So if you think this stuff is really cool, I'm not going to take that away from you. For me, the actual cutscenes and the quick time event stuff were very reminiscent of Asura's Wrath, and I actually yep. kind of liked that game. But the difference between that Dude, game that and that game was game, fucking sweet. Asura's Wrath was fucking cool, man is that Astro's Wrath is only like six hours long. So cool shit was happening like all the time and it was structured like a season of TV. So the pacing really worked for that game. I know people have a lot of problems with that. I feel like if it came out today, people would actually love it because people have been conditioned to watch hours of cutscenes. So the kaiju battles were fun and interesting. They definitely had some DBZ moments and like I said, Astro's Wrath. So if you like the over the top anime shit, you'll probably like these. Okay, so now moving on to the story. This is why you shouldn't buy this game. Period. I would say, just judging by the fact that 75% of this game, possibly more... Let's see. I saw it with the two don't make me post The Last of Us 2 montage. I'm not making you do anything, man. In Vesney with the 5, Final Fantasy has always had weeb writing. I just think that Final Fantasy 16 out of all Final Fantasy games has the least cringe weeb writing, and Ragnarok is worse easily... I just don't really see how it's weeb, though. Like, there's not fucking big fucking bouncy anime titties, jailbait characters, like fucking over-the-top cucked characters, slice-of-life bullshit, fucking schoolgirl shit. Like, I don't really see the anime themes. This is literally just, like, fucking a fantasy game, bro. It just happens to be made in Japan. I don't really think that makes it anime. It's just a fantasy game. Like it's like literally a Game of Thrones like game. Just set in the Final Fantasy universe. I don't know. I don't really see any like anime themes. Like there's no fucking thirst trapping really. It's very mature. I don't know, dude. I don't see anything really anime in this game. Like, if there was, like, fucking little girls running around with, like, fucking anime skirts on from their fucking schools with big titties about to bounce out of their fucking shirt. Like, prime example, fucking, what was her name from Final Fantasy XV? Cindy? The chick with, like, her tits about to literally pop out of her shirt? That is anime shit. At the beginning of the game, the uh, mechanic chick. That is, like, anime shit, bro. Like, that, you would have a case, like, okay, yeah, that's, like, some fucking anime bullshit. <laughs> like, that, 100%, is more anime than anything in Final Fantasy sixteen.
But yeah, I just don't really see like the anime themes in this game. At all. Is cutscenes and dialogue of a story that's not even good, by the way. I got spoiled of the ending, and I mean like all the details of the ending before release. And the ending alone will leave a dog shit taste in your mouth, dude. Trust me. The ending is horrible. And you might say to yourself, well, maybe the characters are good. No, the characters aren't good either. Clive is the only real character, and he's not even a good one. Clive feels like a relic of the mid to late 2000s, where they had these edgy protagonists like Alex Mercer or Shadow the Hedgehog, or whatever the guy's name from Dark Sector is. That type of character that is just this emo edgelord type. And Clive's even worse than them because he cries and screams in multiple scenes. In fact, the Giga Chad looking bad guy <laughs> autistically screams out of nowhere in a random scene. It was very awkward. Nah, I, that's not really out of nowhere, bro. Because his fucking hoe's head was in the box. And that's like his whole fucking character type, is he's like some fucking rage monster. Yeah, I don't know. I, I disagree with that. This dude's like whole fucking character is like he's like some fucking, you know, roided out rage beast. Like, he has fucking permanent roid rage, pretty much. <laughs> like, I don't really think that was out of nowhere because, like, Benedicta's head was in the fucking box. So, yeah. The roid rage really kicked the fuck up. Vesnia with the five, it has a bunch of corny anime awakening slash rage moments. Just because there isn't jailbait doesn't make it... So, awakenings equal anime um i'm pretty sure that's not an anime thing bro that's like saying that the idea of fucking mechs is anime no it's just like a media theme like when i think of anime shit I think of, like, the over-the-top fucking busty chicks, the schoolgirl shit, the fucking cuck main characters that are too afraid to talk to a woman that they literally recoil physically, slice-of-life garbage. Like, I don't know, man. Over-the-top, like, I guess humor and shit. I mean, I just don't really see, like... I don't really fucking see Awakening and Rage. So is God of War a fucking anime game? Like the Rage of Sparta in God of War 3, is that like an anime thing? I don't fucking think so. Would anybody describe God of War 3 as a fucking anime game? Like that's not fucking weeb to me. Is Devil May Cry a fucking weeb game? I don't really think so. I don't know, man. I'm going to agree to disagree on that. That to me is not like a fucking... I don't know. That's just kind of dumb. God of War 3, I would not consider to be weeb. Dark Souls can be weeb? How is Dark Souls weeb, bro? It's just... Like, this is the thing. Just because something comes from Japan does not mean it's fucking anime or weeb shit. Like, I don't know. Just because something exists in Japan does not make it fucking weeb, guys. Well, dude, the Devil May Cry chicks are all over the age of, like, 20, so... The weebs don't like that. They're too old. If they, like, were 13 to 16, then yeah. They'd eat that shit up, bruh. They would eat that shit up. Like, what was that shit on the front page of Steam? The, uh, Koei Tecmo sale? That shit's anime.
So I saw it with the 20. Skip through it, bro. No harm. Still through my favorite game today. All right, man. We'll check it out. Vesnia with the 2. Bro, you're making up arguments. Stop the coat. What arguments am I making up, though? Like, you're the one who's saying that fucking awakenings and rage equals fucking anime. I'm not making a fucking argument. Like, you're the one who's making the argument that it's weeb. I'm not saying it's weeb. I don't consider rage to be weeb. Personally, but... Hey, to each their own. I mean, like, is it weeb, for example... I mean, you can think about... I mean, even in, like, Western media, bro, what is that one fucking Disney princess shit where, like, the fucking main villain turns into a dragon? Like, that's an awakening. Is that weeb? I don't fucking think so. (laughs) Like, I don't know, bro. There's, like, that one fucking Disney movie where, like, the uh, main villain or whatever turns into a fucking dragon or some shit. Like, that's a quote-unquote awakening slash rage moment or whatever the fuck. I don't really consider that weeb. Is it Snow White? I have no fucking idea what it is, dude. Yeah, that's weeb. All right, man. Disney is now weeb. Interesting. So, basically, y'all are just going to say... Anything is weeb. Got it. Sleeping Beauty? Yeah, and Sleeping Beauty is like old as fuck. Before anime was even a fucking thing, so... Cope and see, motherfuckers. Like, are werewolves weeb? <laughs> like, the fuck... Like, this is what I mean, bro. Is Skyrim fucking weeb because you can turn into a fucking werewolf or a vampire lord? Like, that's awakening. That ain't fucking weeb, bruh. The concept of, like, transformation or having, like, hidden powers or whatever is just a fucking fantasy concept. It's not a fucking weeb thing. I don't know. Is Zeus weeb? Oh, yeah, bro. 100%. He's a fucking weeb. Look at him, man. He fucked his sister. (laughs) Dude, you might have a good case for fucking Greek mythology being weeb. Because it's, like, completely stuffed full of incest. So, there you go. It's completely stuffed full of incest and sister fucking. So, yeah. Greek mythology might have a case for being weeb. You generation with the two just admit you're a weeb, bro. It's a safe space. You generation, I do not play honey pop like you do. Cope. Why is there more screaming? With the rest of your rats, and this is how you repay me? Find out where he is. And some of you might be thinking, how could the story possibly be bad? The story in the demo was good, and I'm with you. I actually did think the story in the demo was good. There were too many cutscenes still, even in the demo. But it's very evident that the game director was inspired by Game of Thrones. That's another thing he's admitted to. No, dude, he was inspired by anime. Directly, because the beginning of the story with the political intrigue and the family drama was actually quite good. After the time skip that takes place directly after the demo, which is 13 years, by the way, Clive gives his live reenactment of 12 years a slave as the slave, and we don't get to see any of that. That could have been a great character development moment. We could have seen why such an emo in the future, because we already got to see some of his life issues in the beginning of the game. That's right, man. A time skip. That's weeb. When Star Wars Episode 3 ended, and then Episode 4 picked up, what, 18 years later? That shit was 100% weeb. Daryl Zone with the 2, it's okay, Griffin. You like weeb games? That's all right, man. Let me play some, uh... What's a weeb game? Uh... Uh... Um... 
What's like a popular weave? Oh, there you go. Genshit and ass. There we go. I had to think about that for a second. I was like, bro, what's a fucking weave game? Persona? Hell yeah, man. Let me play some Pedo Sona real quick. Hell yeah, dude. Pedo Sona. Now that is a fucking weeb game. Imagine not watching anime. I don't have to, dude. I live that reality every single life. Or every single day of my life. Shit, man. Anime is fucking trash. You'll have like you'll come to the same realization one day. Like dead ass, dude. Like one day you'll be watching anime and be like, why the fuck am I watching this trash? And you'll never want to watch it again. That shit happened to me. It's like literally a weight is lifted off your shoulder and then you just realize, yeah, this is like literal fucking goy slop garbage. It's like the equivalent to an animated Marvel movie. Like it's the same shit copy pasted a million fucking times. It's trash, dude. Absolute fucking trash. Yeah, I would say Berserk is not a very weeb series. 100%, dude. At least the fucking old-ass TV show. It just sucks. <laughs> like, that's the thing, bro. Like, Berserk, I think, is dog shit. But I don't really consider that to be, like, super fucking weeby or anything like that. Like, there's no fucking, like, obvious jailbait, like, schoolgirl bullshit, like, over-the-top fucking cucked characters and, you know, like, garbage-ass fucking... I don't know, man. It doesn't have, like, the same stereotypical tropes that, like, 99% of animes have. I just don't fucking like it. Yeah, when I think of weeb, I think of, like, slice of life, romance, big titties, schoolgirl, fucking, you know, cringe humor... That's, like, kind of what I think of when I say weeb. Uh, Vesni with the five, I'm talking about an anime trope where a character has something tragic happen to them, and then they scream and unlock their true power that is weeb? I don't think that's weeb, man. That's just literally, like... So... Is fucking King Arthur weeb? Like, there's so, dude, there's so many examples throughout history where you can point to, like, a fucking heroic figure, like, rising to an occasion and discovering they have, like, some hidden fucking potential. Like, I don't understand how you can say, like, oh, discovering that you have powers is weeb. That's just, that doesn't make sense. There's so many fucking stories throughout human history that somebody discovers they have, like, fucking, you know powers or some shit yeah hercules is a fucking weeb bro like I, I don't know like nah i i disagree with that just because someone discovers they have like powers or some shit does not make it weeb there's so many different stories either, either, either subscribe donate where or people have out. that like fucking moment Oh, God, I'm going to butcher this, man. But, uh, Athip, uh, NGO with the tier one. Appreciate it, man. Hopefully I said that right. Bruh, I'm key. You calling other people a contrarian is fucking rich, my guy. With his mother being crown bitch of the year, viewing her own... I think if anything, bro, y'all are the prime example of weebs because you can't separate things from anime. I think that's the issue here, is I'm arguing what is and isn't weeb with a bunch of fucking weebs who are obsessed with anime and see it everywhere they fucking look because, you know, they're weebs son as trash a genetic defect that should have been aborted a failure because he wasn't the dominant that's a terrible name by the way but the dominants are essentially the people who have the icons inside of them they're like gods among men yet apparently they can be enslaved a lot of them are subservient to empires but if you can turn into a i thought only one of them is and that was uh jill Jill was the only icon that was, like, subservient. 
Because fucking Titan is like the ruler of his nation. Bahamut is the crown prince of his. Odin is the fucking, you know, king. Um, Rama is fucking Sid. The Phoenix is literally the fucking ruler of his kingdom. Like, none of them were actually, like, subservient. I don't know, man. They all kind of did their own thing except Jill. Because basically they threatened to kill a bunch of kids if she didn't fucking cooperate. Yeah, that's what the crown prince is. The son of the emperor. Uh, Simpy Shrek with the two. There's no good Western shows. Mm, I disagree with that. You just got to look. And Vezina with the five. I'm still going to disagree, but regardless, at least Clive is a cool character, and Aerith is better than Tifa. I can 100% agree with that. For fucking sure. Aerith is what people with taste choose. Tifa is Ooga Booga Big Titties. Monkey brain kick in. A fucking kaiju. Why would you listen to anyone? A fucking Jill, who is Clive's childhood friend, somehow gets enslaved despite the fact that she can activate her icon ability at will. On yeah, but her icon ability, like, literally fucking kills her. Unlike Clive. And that's a whole other thing, too. Like, in the very intro of the game, and don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything that happens after, like, the three-hour mark. It's very evident to the audience that Clive is a freak. The way it's framed, it doesn't even seem like they're setting up a twist. But for the sake of the story, Clive doesn't know. He assumes some other dominant of fire that we've never... Dude, they literally explained that in the marketing material, so I don't really think they needed to make it a secret. ...ever seen before, killed his brother in cold blood. And then the game actually acts like this is a big reveal after you fight Garuda and Sid sees you transform into Ifrit. It's not a twist. Everyone knew. They didn't yeah. even pretend it was a twist. And this isn't even... I don't think it was set up to be a twist. It's more of like, you know... I don't know. I don't see an issue with that. First time the story does this either. I'm not going to spoil the other thing, though you could probably guess it relates to Joshua. He's oh, obviously yeah. an important character, and his icon is the Phoenix. You know what Phoenixes do. I don't even have to spoil yeah. it. You could just logic your way into that twist. Exactly. I think most people did. And after the 13-year time skip, the story just drops off a fucking cliff. On top of what I said earlier about that possibly i don't think i actually think the story gets better personally but again uh that's kind of like a subjective thing i like the story more towards the middle part than i'm at versus towards the beginning it being a great opportunity to develop clive's character and we really get to what is the story Basically, the mother crystals are, like, sucking the land dry and causing the blight. So you have to go in and, like, destroy all the fucking mother crystals and shit like that. Not to get into too many spoilers, but that's, like, the overall story. And then, at the same time, you have, like, all these different kingdoms, like, competing for control over the crystals as well. Like, I don't know, man. I don't see an issue with the plot personally, but that is a heavily subjective thing because there are some people who like the ending to Game of Thrones Season 8. So, the story is going to be different for everybody whether you like it or not. To know him as a person, the plot just stops being interesting after that point. Your bitch mother disappears from the story. At the time of me recording this, I haven't even seen her again. And there's a second time. Yeah, she shows up. He put the little note there. Skip. Maybe you could consider that a spoiler. I don't. So Clive hasn't even seen his own mother in 18 years. And I thought they were setting her up to be like one of the main villains. But she's barely in the story. She for the first is half. one of the main villains. And I haven't gotten to the end. You can definitely tell she's going to be very prominent. So... Now, another problem I want to bring up with the story is the tonal... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think the longer you play this, the better the story gets, personally. Whiplash, and also just the conflict of themes in general. And this seems to be a problem with a lot of Japanese media. Japan really struggles with telling a serious, dark story. 
and I think this story is a perfect example of that. Where it wants to be Game of Thrones, DBZ, and Kingdom Hearts all at the same time. Kingdom Hearts? Well, let me tell you, you cannot mix a serious, grounded, dark fantasy story with Kingdom Hearts. It doesn't fucking work. You cannot have a bunch of people's throats getting slit, having an almost rape scene, and then in the next scene, you have a guy autistically screeching for no apparent reason. Dude. All right, yeah, he completely missed the point of this scene. Like, the chick's head was in the fucking box, bro. He wasn't just autistically screaming for no fucking reason. Like, his little fucking boo thing's head was in the fucking box, man. It's like fucking Brad Pitt in Seven when he fucking spurgs the fuck out when his wife's head is in the fucking box. You know? Like, that's like the whole fucking point of the ending of the movie is like, you know. It causes him to commit the last murder himself. But yeah, that's, I don't know. I think he missed that. And then adult Joshua coming in looking like Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2 talking about saving his brother anime style and and then Clive screaming and crying because a certain someone dies and it's just oh yeah boy, that shit fucking... was corny I will say like Clive got very very quickly attached to Sid for no apparent reason in all honesty like that was kind of weird I thought Cause like they're not even together that long. And cringe, man. I mean, slavery especially of Jill all too. Like Jill barely even interacted with them. But maybe she's just sensitive, bro. Things is a major. I agree. Theme that in was this weird. Game and there's a cartoonish racism scene in this bar where a woman casually talks about giving away her newborn baby because it's one of these bearers, the people with magic powers. And that's another plot hole with the plot in general, is that the race, quote unquote, that everyone is racist against, the bearers, are people with magic powers. So you're telling me if in medieval times, random people were born with a firearm built into their arm that somehow they would be enslaved? No, they would Yeah. I mean, look at all the fucking witch trials throughout history would kill all the normal people and enslave what was left of them it makes no sense the other way around even worse with what i told you about the dominance that some of the dominance serve these people they could wipe there's out only one dominant that's actually a slave and it's jill and yeah the reason's not super fucking you know great why she's subservient but there's only one that's actually subservient an entire fucking army by themselves and they never explain this by the way Maybe it's in the shitty lore that I'm not going to read, because fuck lore. Lore is a terrible band-aid for modern games. Nerds are obsessed with trivial shit that does not matter. You know what matters? The narrative and the characters. And this game fails on both accounts. And the characters are constantly brooding and depressed. There's a scene where it looks like a bunch of bodies got burnt. There's another scene where there's a bunch of corpses that are strung up. And then not an hour later, you do a goofy play Yeah, this shit was uncle. weird. Uncle, and dude, I know there's people who like this shit, but it's mega ultra cringe. Dude. Yeah, this shit was cringe, man. Hey, I actually really liked I laughed my fucking ass. I was like, bro, what the fuck is this shit? Daryl, some of the 2C, even he says it's an... Well, dude, he's getting a lot of shit wrong with the story. Pot had investor with D5 because each Final Fantasy is a different story. Does that they won't wait? Does that mean they won't return to the story for a si ah? If they do like 16 too, but typically Final Fantasy games have like a conclusive ending. Very rarely do they not like actually have like a concise ending. But if anything, there will be DLC. But I think Square Enix said they don't have any plan for this game. But. Yeah, now typically it's very rare to get like a Final Fantasy like 10, 10 2 situation. 10 2 got made just because the first game was so fucking successful. I'm like convinced. And then Final Fantasy 13 got 13 2, and then it got Lightning Returns, which was a very rare oddity. But every other Final Fantasy game typically does not have a direct sequel. Like grim, dark, ultra edgy shit. 
and I also like goofy, lighthearted shit. But there comes a point where you can't mix the two together. It's not like Final Fantasy hasn't done dark themes or had a dark story concept in general before. As I've said before, the only one I finished was 10. And 10, yeah, it has some major story and character issues, but I still really like the story as a whole. And the villain, Maester Seymour, is honestly ahead of his time because he's the perfect nihilist. He wants to wipe out humanity because he wants to end suffering, thinks life is pointless because it's an endless cycle. Sin can only be sated for a certain amount of time when a priestess is sacrificed. So yeah, that story actually had a really dark premise, but it had many moments of levity, some lighthearted characters. I mean, Final Fantasy VII is kind of the same in that regard. I mean, that's basically all Final Fantasy games. They all kind of have, like, dark themes to them, but then, like, lighthearted moments, so... Characters that were enjoyable to watch, except for Tidus, fuck him. And yeah, that dude's a fucking twink-ass bitch. Yuna's is kind of boring, but, like, all the other side party members were interesting. This game has nothing like that. If you don't like Clive, you're not gonna like the characters. And I'm serious, when nothing interesting happens, it feels like half of the main quests are filler. You go to a place, you kill some minor enemies, maybe you fight a fun mini-boss, then the mission's over. And when it comes to the level design, there's actually nothing to even talk about, because you either have these linear levels that are hallways, fucking final hallway 16, or there's a couple open zones in the game, and guess what? There's nothing in them. All that open space just to pick up a couple crafting materials or maybe fight a unique mini- A bunch of crafting materials you don't even fucking use, at least to where I am in the game. Like, I have a shit ton of crafting materials, zero fucking reason to use them. That's another issue I have. Hey boss, that's all that's in there, guys. It's a bunch of empty space, you know, just like an MMO. Hmm, maybe it was a bad idea to get MMO developers to develop a single player game. And I gotta say it one last time before we get to the conclusion. There's too many fucking cutscenes. Yes. Some of these cuts. Like, you did not need a fucking cutscene for the town whore, dude. Scenes I agree. Did not need to exist. Like, walking on an elevator or walking off an elevator. Eh, I don't mind that because it was kind of cool because it, like, shows the scale of the building you're in. I disagree with that. Vader or the characters talk about something they've already talked about three goddamn times. There are many cutscenes in this game over 10. Yeah, like cutscenes like this were unnecessary. Minutes, dude. I split my recordings into hour long segments, right? For editing purposes. Two of my recordings are 90% cutscenes, and the battles that made up the other 10% were nothing. 50 straight minutes of talking to NBCs about nothing that actually fucking matters. I have no idea how the hell gamers make an excuse for this shit. Okay, let's just get to the conclusion before I keep complaining about the same things over and over again. Is the combat good? Yes. Maybe I didn't sell it that well because as you know, I do focus on the negatives a lot of times, but I do think it's a fun combat system. There's a decently high skill ceiling if you like stringing together various moves. Me personally, I stopped caring after a certain point. So, you know, if the gameplay is not good enough for you, just know that it doesn't fucking matter because your damage is maybe 5% higher than mine. So, effectively, your combos are pointless. Not to mention, to state it again, there is no combo meter. That being said, it is fun. I'm not gonna pretend it's not fun. I had a good time when I was in the combat. That's not my real problem with this game. The problem with this game is everything that isn't the combat. The level design is non-existent. It's all fucking hallways. The open areas are almost completely pointless. You might as well be walking in a straight line the whole fucking game. As for the story, the story's boring. All the interesting stuff happens in the first two hours. If you play- mm, No. The demo, you saw the best part of the story. After that, the story- Yeah, I'm gonna heavily disagree with that. It takes a nosedive. Nothing really all that interesting happens, except for giant boss battles, turning into a kaiju, that sort of thing. And that's more just because of the spectacle value. The actual storytelling around it, what builds up to those scenes, the characters, none of that is memorable in any way, despite the fact that so much of this game is cutscenes, and it's wasted on forgettable, boring shit. This game- does not respect your time. I feel like I could just copy and paste a lot of my same criticisms with God of War Ragnarok to this. 
So instead of playing this game, you really should just play anything else that does what this game does, but better. If you're looking for an RPG experience, this isn't even a fucking RPG, so I would suggest you play any Final Fantasy before 13 would be better than this for sure. Even something very cliche like Dragon Quest has its own charm to it. Those games are decently fun. Xenogears is a game that has a great story, but, well, that game has its own major flaw to it, but if you want a unique sci-fi setting, Xenogears definitely fits the bill. If you want Dude, Dragon Quest has way more fucking filler than this game does for sure. If you want a more recent game, you could just play those Xenoblade games. I'll admit I got bored 30 hours into the- Dude, Xenoblade is fucking horrific if you hate dialogue. <laughs> like, fuck, dude. If you hate dog shit, linear, and unnecessarily open world design, overwhelming amounts of dialogue and cutscenes, and repetitive fucking bullshit, yeah, Xenoblade is not the game for you. Like, Xenoblade is probably one of the worst defenders I've ever seen. First At one. least two. I haven't played the others, but... But I gotta say, I did like the story of what I played. In terms of gameplay, just play a better hack and slash game. Even God of War, which has a more simplistic and more repetitive combat than this game, at least the vast majority of the game is combat. Of course, people would probably tell you to play Devil May Cry. I can definitely vouch for Bayonetta or Metal Gear Rising, really. Metal Gear Rising is probably the best game that Platinum's ever made. Either that or Vanquish, but that's a- Yeah, Vanquish is fire, man. Third person shooter, not a hack and slash, but that's still a great game too. I would also say Dragon's Dogma, which I feel like I have to recommend every time we talk about an action RPG or hack and slash. Though Dragon's Dogma is also a severely flawed game, but unlike this game, again, the vast majority of it is gameplay, even if it's not always fun. I'd say pretty much any game that is a game, mostly a game, would be better than this game. If you cut out 50% of You don't like Vanquish, I'm Key? What the fuck's wrong with you, man? The game's fun as fuck. The cutscenes in this game, and the story was exactly the same, which it would be, because half the cutscenes are fucking filler, then I feel like I could probably recommend this at a discount. But as it stands, the only people who are going to have fun with this game are either people with incredibly low standards for storytelling, which, let's be honest, that's a lot of game. Yeah, I think he missed a lot of the major story moments in this game, bro, honestly. I don't know. I think the story is pretty good, personally, but again, that's, that's probably like the most subjective part you could probably make. Or I guess, you know, statement you can make about a game is if you like a story or not. Gamers. Gamers have no respect for their own time, which is why movie games keep getting made. Can you imagine if every book had a filler chapter every 30 pages about a stupid fucking side quest where a guy has to pick up dirt? Only in gaming do we make excuses for this. Did you not? At one point, I just felt a mighty icon in what was one of the most mind-blowing boss showdowns I've ever Gamers seen in my life. Gamers is my favorite word, something like that, right? And then immediately after that, like literally five minutes after that, I was being tasked by the town engineer to go and collect lumps of dirt. Yeah. So I was walking by this riverbed, collecting dirt. And then you get like four XP, bro. The side quests. But yeah, to wrap this up. Yeah, the side quests are a total fucking waste of time. Unless it has like the green plus mark inside of it, I would skip it personally. If That's Final what Fantasy I started doing. I stopped all side quests except the ones with like the little plus sign because those give you like an actual upgrade. 16 was half gameplay, half cutscenes. It would be a fine game. As it stands, it's practically unplayable to anyone with a low attention span, which I'm not ashamed to say I definitely have a low attention span, but the story's not even good. Anyway, the gameplay is the only redeeming part of this game, and it is good combat. It is. And this isn't really related to the quality of the game, but it looks like Final Fantasy isn't nearly as popular as it used to be. The early sales numbers are looking pretty bad, so this might actually end up being the true Final Fantasy. I think it would hit 3 million. I have no idea what Final Fantasy 15 sold at first, but apparently it hit 3 million sales? I don't know by Final Fantasy standards if that's good or not. Isaac with the 2? Yo. Gaming. Uh, 
let me see. What was Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy first week. So Final Fantasy 16 sold over 3 million copies in its first week. I want 15, bitches. I don't want 16. Um, Final Fantasy 15 sold 2.7 million for the first week. So technically this one's selling better than 15. So it's actually doing pretty well. See you next time, guys. It's doing pretty decent, actually. It's up from a multi-platform game, so... And, I mean, there was more PS4s out there than PS5s at the time of Final Fantasy XV coming out, too, anyway. So, I think it's doing all right. I mean, Final Fantasy's not, like, the super mainstream game anyway, so... You know, what, 15 sold, like, 10 million... 5 to 10 million is typically the range for Final Fantasy games, so I'd say it's doing all right. Once it comes out on PC, that'll boost it a lot, too. But yeah, Final Fantasy 15 came out to a much larger install base and still sold less, so I think it's doing all right. I'm shocked this game isn't selling more. I'm not, like... Dude, it's not like a GTA or a Call of Duty or something like that. Final Fantasy's always been kind of niche. I mean, it's the most popular JRPG, but it's not it's not in the fucking same realm as like, you know, a Skyrim or a fucking Mass Effect or what's another RPG franchise? A Pokemon, if you even call that RPG, but yeah. You know, it's always been kind of niche, but it's like the largest JRPG, which is still a pretty niche genre. Skyrim is trash. I'm key. This is how we know you're a contrarian, bro. If you dislike Mass Effect and Skyrim, you're full of shit, my guy. Keep coping, motherfucker. Keep fucking... Yeah, but Final Fantasy 7 and 10 were both, like, considered graphical showcase titles. That's the thing, is, like, Final Fantasy 7 was, like, the graphical showcase for the PlayStation 1. So, when Final Fantasy's not, like, I feel like this, like, fucking genre-defining experience, it's not super fucking mainstream. But even then, Final Fantasy 7 only sold, like, 10 million copies. So... Final Fantasy X, I think, sold 20 million, but typically they don't sell that much. Like 20 million, like 20 million copies is not really even that high, honestly. Like that's an okay success for like big AAA games nowadays. Mass Effect 3 has really good gameplay, but yeah, the first one has shitty gameplay. Cause it's old as fuck. Yeah, well, of course it would do better if it was multi-platform. More people could buy it. Lord Pond and Investor with the 2, what do you think about a Dark Souls Pokemon? <laughs> that shit would be awful. <laughs> Absolutely fucking awful. I don't know how they would even do that shit. Like, the fuck... So, like, are you saying you would play as, like, a Pokemon and then, like, have a Souls, like, boss fights as the Pokemon? I don't know, man. I, I don't really see that working. I mean, maybe you could do it, but... Dude, that PAL World game looks like absolute jack fucking... Dude, that shit looks like fucking horseshit. Like, it doesn't even look developed properly. Dude, Legends of Arceus sucked. I didn't even bother playing it. I saw the gameplay for it and was like, nah. Hell nah. Alright, so let's get these uh, recommended videos out. 
copy paste. Well, I never thought this day would come. A YouTuber just made an apology video worse than Sienna May's iconic interpretive dance. For those that don't remember, Sienna May was a TikToker accused of sexual assault, and for some reason, she uh, Scotty Man with the two, they released a Japan only a Final Fantasy 16 PS5 and face plates, dude. Do you know what we're getting in fuck? Do you know what we're getting instead of the Final Fantasy fucking accessories that Japan got? Can y'all take a guess? What custom controller and face plates for the PlayStation are we getting, bruh? We're getting fucking LeBum James fucking. We're getting fucking LeBron branded fucking PlayStation accessories. Like, why the fuck? Dude, what? Why the fuck are we getting LeFraud James fucking PlayStation faceplates when literally Japan is getting Final Fantasy faceplates and fucking controllers? Why do we need a LeBron controller? Nobody was fucking asking for that shit. Nobody was fucking asking for that shit, man. Yeah, that's right, man. I'm just gonna say it, since you're talking shit about me with your big fucking ugly mouth, you're all hateful fucking racist bigots. Fuck you and fuck your fucking podcast. Dude, it's fucking pathetic, man. We get fucking LaFraud James and... Japan gets Final Fantasy 16 controllers. She marched into the mines of Mordor and hatched the most diabolical plan of all time. Forged the work. I saw there with the five about to pass out. Ignore my recommendation choices. It's all good. If so, no worries, man. We'll get to him. And Daryl Zone with a two. LeBron James controller looks dope. No, it does not, dude. That shit looks awful. Hold on. Dude, that shit looks fucking terrible. Look at that. It literally looks like some fucking retarded kid drew all over your controller. And what is that shit? It says nothing is given, everything is earned. Like, dude, it's so fucking gay. Who the fuck is going to buy that shit other than fucking, like, retarded, like, basketball fans? They're like, oh my god, I gotta consume it. First video apology ever where it was like, hold on, compare that to compare it to this, man. Which one looked better to y'all? Like, look at that controller, dude. That shit looks absolutely fire. Versus fucking nothing is given, everything is earned. Like, fuck off, bro. This shit's way better. That shit looks fire, dude. That shit looks way better. Like, why the fuck aren't we getting that shit, dude? Nobody wants the LeBron fucking console. Interpretive dance apology. So she starts fucking boogieing out there, doing some of this. A little bit of, a little bit of these, and by God, I'm ashamed to say it, but she even did some of this. Just kind of downplaying the entire situation, and keep in mind, it was sexual assault accusations that also had a video as well. So there was a ton of evidence, and she still just tried to do like an apology interpretive dance. I did not think there would ever come a time that someone makes a worse response than that, but hooey, how wrong I was. <laughs> hey, it's been a while since you saw my face. I haven't been doing so great, so I took a little break. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. Doesn't matter if it's true, though. Just as long as it's entertaining to you. That bleeding in your ears is normal. This is a ukulele apology <laughs> video. She's turned her accusations... Bruh, white women and their fucking ukuleles, bro. I don't understand why the fuck. Every white girl needs a fucking ukulele. Uh, Isaac with the two, not gonna lie, the Barbie controller is... 
whatever you say, man. I don't know. I want that Final Fantasy 16 one, though. Oski Waski with the two. I still have the Gears of War 3 console. Yeah, that shit looks clean, man. The f Oh, the Gears 5 um, Xbox Elite controller is really fucking cool. That's a cool custom controller. And Titanic Dick with the two. I don't trust anyone who plays the ukulele. Yes. Good choice. It's a red flag. And her response into a Disney it's musical a flag, number yes. here, I suppose. She, she's she got a whole little Broadway moment here to she's got a ukulele sing and run. talk about it. Now, before getting into it, let me give some context on what she's apologizing for. Colleen Ballinger is most known for her Miranda Sings character. If you've been on YouTube for a long time, you've definitely heard that name before. Nope. She was a <laughs> massive superstar on the platform. I have never heard that name before in my entire life. She even had her own Netflix show. And recently, another YouTuber named Adam McIntyre has really started to spearhead this information about her past. And Dog, what the fuck was that thing? Has really started to spearhead Holy shit. this information. Talk about missing the fucking genetic lottery. Like, holy fuck, dude. Information about her past and everything that's happened to them, as well as the group chat that she used to have with a lot of her fans that were minors. And the way she conducted herself, uh, she's been accused of, like, asking for ass pics from her fans. And again, <laughs> most of these fans are minor, were minors Bruh. at the time. <laughs> She'd even send really weird videos to them. It's just, there's been a ton of evidence of very unacceptable shit. So she's been accused of like grooming as well as being a predator. And this video that she made is her response to those very serious allegations. All aboard the toxic gossip train. Chugging down the tracks of misinformation. The toxic gossip train. You got a one way ticket to manipulation station. Nah, she's given us a one-way ticket to defecation station because this is some shit here. I don't know how she thought this was a good idea at all. She doesn't even disprove any of the allegations. She just calls it the toxic gossip train like it's some kind of little musical number out of Magic School Bus or something that she's not taking seriously. In the face of very serious claims, she decides to put on the entire clown outfit and grab her trusty ukulele. You know, I will give credit, though. She didn't go the traditional, like, uh, Oh my god, I'm so sorry, my mental health. Uh. But the thing is, I'm of the mindset, bro, at this point, unless there's actual fucking charges, I don't give a fuck. Like, unless these so-called victims go to the fucking police and bring their fucking evidence and an investigation is opened, I'm, like, sick of these fucking allegations and all this type of shit, bruh. Like, I'm really fucking sick of all this allegation bullshit. Like, shut the fuck up, go to the police, and stop airing your fucking so-called criminal victimality or victimhood on the fucking internet. Like, go through the fucking proper channels and prevent this shit from happening in the future. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I don't have sympathy anymore for people who don't fucking shut the fuck up and go talk to the cops. If you were so, like, abused by this person and illegally groomed and she's literally requesting fucking child porn being sent to her by you as an underage person... Go to the fucking cops. I guarantee you it's probably still within the statute of limitations. Like, stop airing all this shit out on the internet, bro. I don't know. Like, I'm just sick of, like, the attention whoring. Like, it makes me not want to believe this shit just by default. Because how many fucking times does this shit come out? And then, like, three months later, it's completely fucking proven false. So, yeah. Galele and go to battle but it's not really a battle because she doesn't even really tackle any of the claims she doesn't refute anything or defend herself she just makes a song toxic gossip train tie me to the tracks and harass me for my past these rumors look like facts if you don't mind the gaps i won't survive in the crash but hey at least you're having fun 
I'm sorry to keep pausing this so frequently. I just have so much to say. And trust me, I'm really doing you a favor with all of these breaks here to give you a I will say she is the most talented ukulele singer that I've ever heard because typically it sounds like nails on a fucking chalkboard. DEA with the two, no one gives a dang about her issues to be real. Yeah, exactly, bro. I don't give a fuck about this drama. <laughs> Brief, like, respite from the uh, fucking unbelievable I didn't even cringe. know who this bitch was until this video. Like, this is some pure undiluted unhinged delusion dude y'all groom me every single fucking day man i'm gonna file criminal charges against this fucking chat this is so strong everyone in here tries to convince me that i'm a fucking flaming homosexual dude and i don't appreciate it i feel like it needs to be added to the periodic table like the element of delusion that she is displaying here like this song is fucking haunted honestly this is like that track out of courage a cowardly dog with velvet vic where like sucks you into the the record player that's this song, but it sucks you into a group chat where she's like asking about your first period and asking for ass pics or something. But the reason I'm pausing it here. See, this is the strategy, man. I think I figured it out. Y'all spend all this time trying to convince me that I'm fucking gay. And then JBT in particular pays to watch like a bunch of fat bitches to like try and turn me off from women. Like, I think this is, like, fucking premeditated and planned out, bro. Like, real talk. Like, y'all try to convince me for, like, a couple hours that I'm fucking gay. And then you put a bunch of ugly, fat bitches in front of me to try and convince me that all women are ugly, fat bitches. And maybe I should take the fucking gay pill. Well, it ain't gonna fucking work. I'm on to your shit. <laughs> I'm on to your fucking shit, bro. Yeah, this is, like, some fucking gay psyop shit, man. You're not putting fucking chemicals in my water that turn the frogs gay, motherfuckers. Hell nah. It ain't gonna work. Is because this is something she falls back on a lot in the song, and I don't want to just keep playing too much of the song. She seems to think that a lot of people are taking pleasure in watching all of this and says like, oh, it's all untrue, but you're just doing it because it's entertaining and you're having fun. I've never fully understood that perspective because... I imagine most people don't have fun learning that people they grew up watching or people they were at least aware of being a big influence turned out to be absolute fucking scumbags, groomers, predators, all these horrible things. Like, no one has fun with accusations like that, I don't think. Certainly not the victims of it. The victims of Miranda Sings, Colleen Ballinger here, definitely aren't having any fun here. This has been mentally damaging shit that they've carried for a long time. Now, I, I do think there is an argument to be made about... But why did they carry it for... See, this is the thing, bro. If it was so damaging, why did they carry it for so fucking long? Like... Dude, the Me Too shit has been going on for so fucking long. It has been so popular to be a victim for like a decade now. You're telling me that nobody wants that fucking drop of clout, so they just, you know, held it in for all these years? Like, yeah, bullshit, dude. There's nobody more attention-seeking than fucking 14-year-old kids. If there was actually some shit going down, they would have been the first to fucking, like, blast that shit on the fucking internet, man. You know? I, I just, like, this is where I draw the fucking skepticism, guys, because it's like, you know, how many times do we go through the same fucking routine where these victims come out years later... All of a sudden, they've been traumatized and they've been living from the fucking, you know, torture and torment caused by the hand of this person, but didn't fucking give a shit enough to come out and say anything when it actually happened. So, I, I don't know, dude. I take all this shit with a fucking grain of salt. The whole Me Too fucking, you know, culture we live in now is, like, just exhaustingly fucking repetitive. Nah, dude, I made my relatives suck my dick, bro. Get it straight. It's the other way around. Oski Waski with the two, not me, Griffin. Get your money up, not your funny up. Big ups, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for not trying to fucking uh, turn me gay. About, like, YouTuber apologies as entertainment. I, I made a whole fucking tier list on it. There is an element of fun to watching a completely disconnected from reality weirdo do something like Miranda Sings has done with this fucking singing apology. It's hard not to point and laugh at the absolute insanity of that situation. But in I those mean, singing is in her name, right? Miranda Sings? Cases, no one's laughing about the actual allegations. Nobody wants 
someone in a position of power like Miranda Sings, Colleen Ballinger, to turn out to be a groomer or a... a what is her position of power? Predator. Yeah, I would need to see the actual fucking, like, proof of this shit. I don't know, man. And I don't really know if I want to go through the fucking rabbit hole of some bitch I've never even fucking heard of before today, in all honesty. Like, this type of shit is not even, like... This is not even of any interest to me, personally. One, I've been wanting to come online and talk to you about a few things. Um, even though my team has strongly advised me to not say what I want to say... I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing what I want to say. So. Holy shit, she's done it. She's Dude, she has the same mouth as Pokemon, and that's not a good sign. She's activating 100% of her brain. What an incredible loophole. Checkmate, lawyers. Her legal team must have been there like, No! She got us. How did we not think of that? We never said she couldn't sing it. Damn. She's good. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way, where I was just trying to be besties with everybody. There, there were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. Let's go on the toxic gossip train. If you have anything to refute the claims, why don't you present it? In Laura Pothead invested with the five. Every few years, there are new Michael Jackson victims. I don't believe if there are no police. Yeah, exactly. Like that HBO documentary that came out about Michael Jackson, where this guy like painted this picture about how Michael Jackson raped him. And then it came out like almost immediately after that the dude fucking lied because he claimed that Michael Jackson like raped him in a building that wasn't even fucking built at the time yet on Michael Jackson's like amusement park. So the whole fucking documentary was complete bullshit and completely made up. So it's like, yeah, this is like the most common trick in the book, dude. Accuse a high profile person of something and either profit from the attention or hope for a settlement just to make it go the fuck away. Like, look at the shit that happened with um, Gwyneth Paltrow and her skiing accident. Like, literally, she was skiing and someone crashed into her. And the person tried to sue her for two fucking million dollars. <laughs> because they had a fucking crash while skiing. Like, what? This is, this is the oldest grift in the book, guys. Like, I don't know. I just... All this type of shit, I take with a massive fucking grain of salt. Nope, they lost, and they had to pay all of her legal fees, which was, like, I think several hundred thousand dollars, so. Get fucking wrecked. Uh, I, Siler with the five, any considered to rumble for terrible copyright? Uh, what? Any considered to rumble for terrible copyright choices? What do you mean? What is Rumble's, like, terrible copyright choices? I think they're pretty relaxed. Instead of doing your little talent show ukulele act, she's saying that this video in the beginning... Yeah, he tried to say the crash changed his personality. Like, he suffered emotional trauma because he fell down while skiing. <laughs> Bro. In the song, she's saying that she's only going to be talking about the facts. And then provides nothing. The facts must have been out of town during the filming of this because she does not present them at all. She doesn't provide anything to refute any of the claims. All she does is say like, no, that's all wrong. Uh, those aren't the facts. You guys are falling for the toxic gossip train. Misinformation super duper but station. Whatever. Like she doesn't actually provide any evidence, any counterpoints, nothing. All she does is just say that it's a lie. That's it. And I guess you're supposed to take her at her word because she's singing it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. This is just invalidating to all of her victims. Like, this is, she is like actually like laughing in their face with this video, I feel. It's pretty disgusting, actually. It, I, I don't understand how she thought this could possibly per be perceived in any meaningful, positive way. Because again, she doesn't defend herself. She doesn't refute any of the claims of all of like the grooming accusations. If she thinks that all of this is overblown or incorrect, why wouldn't she come forward with her evidence to support that and say like, nope, 
this is where all of this is wrong, this is where it's false, this is where you've been lied to and manipulated. She doesn't do that. All she has here is this dumb little fucking song. I, I, I just can't even wrap my head around the thought process. In all seriousness, I do think it's really important to hold people accountable for their mistakes. Um, you know, you should hope that everyone can learn from their mistakes and grow and change their behavior and be a better person. And this is something that I've always tried to do when I make mistakes, and it's something that I will continue to try to do. What? Oh, you don't care? Oh. I thought you wanted me to take accountability, but that's not the point of your mob mentality, is it? No. Your goal is to ruin the life of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their demise. Once again, this is just like shitting on the victims that have come forward. There are tons and tons of messages as well as videos, like a, just an overwhelming amount of evidence that's all pretty damning on Colleen Ballinger's behavior from these group chats. See, he should put it in the video though, because I don't know what the fuck the evidence is. As well as just a lot of other things over the years. And in the song, she just- Can you like give an example of it? This reduces that- No, that's too much work. But, uh, I was just a weird loser sending cringe. It was just a goofball doing loser weird stuff. And then still has the audacity to sing about how she's taking accountability. Yeah, like I really do. This is the thing is there may be damning evidence out there. But in all honesty, bruh, I don't know who the fuck this bitch is. I really don't care who the fuck she is. And I have zero desire to look into this shit myself. <laughs> so, yeah. This could be a big fat nothing or there could be something there. I have no fucking clue on all honesty. Nor do I really give a shit at the end of the day. What the fuck? That's the opposite of accountability. You're minimizing, downplaying the very real harm you caused to your underage fans through these group chats, these interactions, and all the shit that you said and sent. That, that's not taking accountability. You are literally doing the exact opposite by saying, like, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just kind of weird. That's all. What did she say? And then send? she goes in to just say about, like, it, this is just directly shitting on the victims. She goes then into the next part saying that the reason there's a mob mentality is because... They're coming forward with all of these lies to monetize her demise because they don't like her. Well, Colleen Ballinger. Yeah, I like her uh, apology video format. It's unique. I'll give her that. Let's supersize the McDonald's fries here. You're fucking insane. What are you talking about? How could you even like actually put this out there? I don't know how she could not only write this song, perform this song, and this is definitely not her first take, so go through this song multiple times, edit it, and then post this without realizing just how... I don't even know the right word. It's, a, it's like almost downright evil she comes across. Because again, this is like spitting in the face of all the victims that have come forward with a ton of evidence against her. Saying it's not a big deal, they're wrong. Have they taken it to the cops? They're just doing it for clout. It's so, stu it's so sickening. comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that all of you are perfect. So please criticize me. Bring out the daggers made from your perfect past and stab me repeatedly in my bony little back. This is going to come as a surprise. This is going to be shocking. But yeah, most people aren't making mistakes like this. This isn't one of those like whoops a daisy mistakes that everyone makes in their life. Most normal people are going to go through their life without ever doing anything close to what you're accused of doing. Talking sexually with minors in a group chat, sending used underwear to kids. The list goes <laughs> on and on, and she beats this point home. Yo, if that's true, then what the fuck? See, this is the type of evidence he should put in the fucking video, because then you're more likely to be like, oh yeah, no, this bitch is fucked. Yeah, if she's sending fucking used panties to, like, kids and shit, <laughs> like, Fuck, bruh. That's like some OnlyFans type behavior. Home about like how she's just made like a little mistake here and it doesn't make her a bad person. <laughs> but this is again one of those mistakes that like actually does make you a bad person. This isn't like a little mistake. Like she makes it sound like, oh, you don't have the right to criticize me because you're not perfect. Your past isn't perfect. But most people's past isn't exactly <sighs> one that's plagued by degeneracy like this. So, no one's perfect, of course, but that doesn't mean that people don't have the right to criticize you for just how ridiculously awful the shit that you are accused of doing is, and also how terrible this response is. I'm sure you're disappointed in my shitty little song. I know you wanted me to say that I was 
accent in the wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to take that route of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout. Once again, just hawking a big fat loogie in the face of every victim that came forward here. If these are all lies and just rumors, why don't you prove your side of it? Why don't you provide any evidence beyond just a song that says things without showing things or proving things? There is nothing presented here that refutes a single claim at all. She's just singing things. And that's it. That's not evidence. The video and song goes on for like another four or five minutes. Yeah, I wish he would have put the actual evidence in this video, bro. Like, I would like to see it, but I ain't going out of my way to find it. Because again... I don't know who the fuck this bitch is. And it's, but she just keeps saying the same thing about how it's all lies and manipulation, but she doesn't prove any of that. Why wouldn't you want to like actually clear your name? I don't know what she thought this song would do. It doesn't offer any kind of explanation for anything to clear up what she's calling lies and rumors. It's nothing. It, it, there is Dude, mountains T. of like Martin actual had the messages best apology and videos video. of her engaging in very very bad behavior very awful things which has led to people labeling her things like a groomer and a predator which she really doesn't like hey man you know i'm too afraid to talk to women the fuck but that's what i don't even know how to flirt all of these don't worry guys i promise i have not sent out my panties to anyone because i never wear any <laughs> But yeah, no, like, <laughs> bro, that's fucking wild, dog. Sending out used panties to your fucking kid fans? Like, the fuck? Damn, bro. Should have saved that for the OnlyFans crowd. You could have made some serious cash off of that shit. Uh, documents lead towards, point towards, and she does nothing to refute any of it except make this absolutely embarrassing song out of it. It's baffling i couldn't believe this shit today so yeah like i said i'm not gonna play the rest of the video because she just keeps saying it's all lies it's just rumors it, it, you, it's ridiculous i can't believe you guys fell for it but doesn't provide any kind of actual counterpoints or evidence or anything so it's fucking useless Nah, people are into skinny chicks bro that's definitely a kink this is i do think the new worst youtuber apology video and that's that's not that's not an easy feat to have accomplished. So that's wild. That's really about it. Hey, See ya. Hey, Paulo. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, so let's see. I saw there with the five also from the movie Extraction Clip. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, it's copyright, too. It's all good. Ah, uh, could you link it? Because I don't have a link in the super chat. So you can just send it in regular chat, and I can pull it up real quick. But I do not see a link. Yeah, like I said, man, I really don't care about this drama at the end of the day. So I'm not even going to bother to, like, look into it. <laughs> In all honesty, if it was in this video, then I would have paused it and looked at the evidence. But aside from that, dude, I really don't fucking care. I have never heard of this chick in my entire fucking life. And <laughs> I don't really care to learn about her, in all honesty. But I cared about the EDP stuff. Yeah, because they literally caught him trying to meet up a 13-year-old. That's different, my guy. And I've heard of EDP. I just didn't know his name. Like, I'd seen videos of him before. I just didn't know, like, what his actual name was. Everybody knew who EDP was, indirectly. I just never knew he had, like, an actual following or anything. Like, I'd seen the... All right, so this is the story about the time I shot the fucking neighbor's dog. Like, that type of shit, you know. Everybody's seen those fucking clips. Dude, look, they're pushing this video again. This old guy grabbing her fucking ass cheeks. Why is there, like, why is this the one fucking video YouTube wants us to watch 800 times? Um, start at 39. Okay. I got it now. Three, nine. Copy. Uh. 
Watch the women's FIFA World Cup. Yeah. No thanks. Britt, you don't have to lie. You're not going to watch the Women's World Cup. You don't have to lie, Britt. You're not watching the Women's World Cup. We understand. You want to pretend like you're supporting females in sports, but we all know nobody actually gives a fuck. Oh, getting the warning. I got to... Oh, it's okay. Ten seconds. Two, one. All right. So, JBT. Oh, great. Fat hogs. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that is not all you ordered. Ew, it's playing Fortnite on a Switch. Mmm, only two? Yeah, right. Mmm. Light? Dude, why are you even bothering eating light and fit fucking yogurt at this point? Just fucking eat, like, full-fat yogurt. Like, it's not going to make any fucking difference. Ew. a fucking piercing on the underside of her lip. Dude, these are fucking degenerates. Yeah, sandwiches are one of the worst fucking things you can eat. I'm smiling, yeah, because you're addicted to food, you fat ass. There's definitely more than fucking 200 calories in potato salad. It's literally mayo and fucking starch. Literally just eat five eggs. You will have 300 calories and you'll be much more full than eating one of these fucking stupid little sandwiches. Daryl 
Battle Zone with the two you missed being fat? Griffin? That's right. That's why I went to McDonald's and ordered the entire menu. <laughs> Should have poured out the entire fucking beer. is she dipping her fucking sushi in fucking like queso what the fuck was that hold on what the fuck bro is that fucking queso What the fuck, dude? I do not fucking miss McDonald's. Ugh. McDonald's is so fucking nasty. I haven't had McDonald's in like oh almost two years at this point. Like shit. She's British. She said fucking fries were chips. But I'll eat it anyway. and flowers. Yum. Oh my god, dude. This is fucking sad. Time for dessert! Oh my god. How the fuck, dude? Chad, for being honest, is my favorite game. And grab. 
half panzer with the two can you ask them to share please i'm starving i don't think they're into that man don't get between them and their food Brittany Dick with the two. This is why I support women's sports. Oh my god. Too bad most of the women look like men, unfortunately. These are the type of women that should be playing sports, but... Five hundred calories. New generation of the five, Griffin. You don't get that. Wait, get it? This is oppression. I know. They should be able to afford more food. They're vegan, right? Bruh. They would save a fortune if they would just stop eating so much. Average vegan. <laughs> Am I vegan? Fuck no. I had uh, two pork chops today, um, some chili, and eggs. That was all I ate today. Just mainly meats. JBT's ho coming up on screen. Fuck, man. I had to stop that quick. All right. So next up. So two minutes. Let's see. Kill you? What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, 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 no. You, you complete me. Yeah, we still have the copyright warning, but it should be alright. You're not. Got five. Even if you'd like to be. To them, you're just a freak, like me. So two. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop it there because I still do have the copyright. And then the fuck open. All right. So what I'm going to do for this is we'll watch part of it just because we're running out of time. Or actually, I probably can just put it in 2x because it's just gameplay. Two 
too. Didn't think I'd ever see you again. <laughs> How'd you find us? I saw a dude with a big star across the face. Yeah, yeah. Fine. <laughs> I'm gonna get with you. Um, let me try this. Supposed to be looking for the other one. What the fuck is this? You know the smuggler that we killed out in Jackson? Yeah. This girl was there. What? They're coming out. Bruh. That's why Nick was fucked. I'm I'm just doing what's recommended, my guys. I have already sat through this game. Or most of it at least. Let's figure out what she knows. Give a fuck what she knows. You saw what she did to the others. You have no idea how many people she might be with. This might be an animal. I don't care how many people she's with. We'll find them. Can you just think for yourself? No, not the schnoz. Not the sniffer, man. Who's recommending lesbian porn? I saw it, man. He is the lesbian porn enjoyer. Thank God the schnoz is saved. I agree, man. Games should have 2x speed. I think that should be an option in more games for, like, cutscenes and shit. Like, honestly, my fucking ADHD ass can definitely use that. No, I'm not ignoring your recommendation, man. I gotta do the ones that are paid first. I still have it pulled up, so if we don't do it tonight, we'll do it a different night. Dude, if this game actually was at 2x speed, it probably would be a lot better. Honestly. Gas does go bad. After a year, gasoline expires. It actually does. Let's see, you generation with the two. Yeah, we can watch that next. She said it was 17 seconds, so we'll pull that up next. Um I silo with the two. Griffin needs a Brit to hell fucking nah. I'm not getting the mark of the beast. Fuck no. And I silo with the five, my bad bro. I'm so oblivious to copyright for Well, it's not the games that are the problem, it's movie clips. Movie clips are almost immediately tagged. Hey, stupid clown, don't be Rama Rama. It's messing with your brain. Ooh, maybe I should play that song while we're watching this. Abby was here earlier. Where'd she go? I don't know. You shoot me. This battle has every soldier from Britain. Yeah, stupid though. Tell me where she went, I'll take all of them to go. Could have killed you. Maybe she should have. The wonderful nation of Australia. It actually fits the fucking footage, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Your brains will be clear. Come on, come on, come on. 
Don't sniff that petrol, guys. the Australian national anthem. Think about your culture, guys. If your culture revolves around sniffing gasoline from a fucking can, what does that say about your culture? I don't know, bro. Would anything be really lost if they all just continued to huff that shit? I don't think so personally that's like saying think about your culture crackheads stop smoking crack you got an important uh important piece of society to hold up right i don't know man Uh, I saw there with the 10. It's torture time. Uh-oh. More torture porn? Let's go, dude. Neil's left-handed adventure. That's why they added all the accessibility options in The Last of Us Part 2, so Neil could play it with one fucking hand. She looks normal now. No, nah, she's not as hot, bro. Final Fantasy 15 did not sell 5 million in the first day. It sold 2.7 million in the first week. This just reminds me of Synthetic Man's fucking uh, thumbnail when he streamed The Last of Us 2. Yo, hold up. Let me pull up this other video. I'll play that. But I need to find this thing. I'm pretty sure I took a screenshot of it when I saw it in my sub feed. It was fucking weak, bro. It was absolutely fucking weak. Oh, God. You generation, is this you, bro? Like, I could see it being you. Um, paste. This is my vegetarian body! Oh, uh, let me take it off at 2x so you all can get the full effect. This is my vegetarian body! Oh, this it's is almost, my body! Dude, it's almost... It's almost better in 2x, honestly. I think 2x was better. This is my vegetarian body! More like fucking malnourished. Is this what y'all do up in Maine, you generation? Like, I know there's not a lot to do. 
Uh, I sell it with the five Griffin. You disappoint me. This isn't the trailer I sent. Um, I have those pulled up. So this is the next trailer you sent. You sent three. So I have all three of them pulled up. This was the next one. So this is the first trailer you sent. Then you sent another one. Lots of lesbian porn, man. Hold on, let me send this synthetic man thumbnail to myself real quick. I'm pretty sure I screenshotted it on this phone. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Dude, this shit had me fucking dying. Uh, why is it not? There it is. Sent. Well, if it wasn't on this phone, it would be on my uh, OneDrive. <laughs> Bruh. This was the fucking thumbnail, dude. Look at that shit. <laughs> oh my fucking god, bruh. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he didn't get a strike for that shit. But holy shit. <laughs> bruh. Oh my god, dude. To it all. <laughs> I'm like shocked he didn't get a fucking strike for that shit, but come me. I don't know, man. Yeah, he had fucking act off Piggler's hat. I'll kill my enemies when they come. <laughs> he should have put Surely the picture of DSP in the hat there. Follow me. Oh, I'm glad he didn't either, because it's a good fucking meme, but you know, the internet's too fucking soft nowadays. You can't make funny memes anymore. Of course it's a bait and switch, man. Neil's never going to show how bad the game actually is before it comes out. But I can't walk on the path of the right. Because I'm wrong. No, I can't walk on the path of the right. <laughs> because I'm wrong. What are you doing, kiddo? Yeah, I'm surprised Synthetic Man did not make, really like, a channel earlier, bro. He would have thrived back in, like, 2012, like, 2013 era YouTube. Although, how old is he? Like, 28? So, he would have been, what? I'm well, like, 18. And I'm gonna kill. Yeah, the ukulele video had way better singing. No mention of Abby Zilla, bro. I wonder why. Hmm. Probably because Abby Zilla wouldn't have sold the game. Oh, fuck off, Sony. These fucking retards. Like, nobody's going to be like, oh my god, I'm going to be 18 to watch a video game trailer. <laughs> I support lesbian couples. That's right. I'm an ally. I wish things were different. Ellie. Wait, what? Lol, you disliked it? Oh, shit. Hell yeah, man. This was back in the day. 
Let's go, dude. But they ain't. What the fuck is wrong with the qual? Auto 360. Dude, I do not have fucking Walmart Wi-Fi, YouTube. Fuck off. Please stop. Yeah, fuck this game, man. Mmm, <laughs> yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I'm leaving tomorrow. To do this smart, we'll be leaving Jackson alone. So they just get to get away with this? Where's Abby? It's the official story trailer. Where's Abby, guys? How'd Why isn't she in the marketing material? Find us. You can't stop this. I want what you want. But not at any cost. Where's Abby? I have to finish it. You literally play half the fucking game as Abby and they don't even show her in the trailer? Hmm. There's Why? Hmm. We could have killed you. Maybe Still you no Abby. Why wouldn't they show her, man? Come on, Neil. Show us your ideal woman. We want to see all that Abby has to offer. All right, we can do this video, and then I'm probably going to pop off. New generation GPUs might literally be making the world worse in unexpected ways. Climate change! In fact, turns out the whole oh, way sorry. enthusiasts approach PC gaming is kind of unsustainable long term. Alright, let me explain. The last year or so has either been fantastic or terrible to be a gamer. Companies have released both amazing new generation hardware and games. And also struggled, like the rest of the tech world, to keep hardware in stock. Still, PC gaming is in a better position in general than it has been in a long time, and people's interest in the hobby continues to grow. But there are a couple of things about a lot of the new hardware that for the last two generations has secretly been irritating me, and I just had no excuse to mention it on a video. Open almost any review of any recent GPU, and there occasionally is a section about power consumption and the cost of a power supply needed. But this is something that is rarely mentioned in the conclusions, or that rarely sticks in Is this really a fucking video about climate change? I was saying that as a joke. I was saying that shit as a fucking joke, dude. Is this guy really gonna act like power consumption is killing the planet? In people's minds. If you ask any average dude, fucking kill yourself, man. In Minecraft, of course. But holy shit, what a fucking dork. Enthusiast following this hobby about the new GPUs, you will usually hear something like the unplug your refrigerator at night because as long as you don't open it for 24 hours, it's technically okay. Media GPUs are very good because they deliver much better performance compared to last year for the same price. I do not think I have ever been in a conversation when anyone mentions this sharply- Dude, this makes me want to go buy a more powerful power supply and GPU just so I can fucking melt those ice caps just a little bit faster. Increasing power consumption of these things, and that is interesting. Here's another example of how this topic seems to always be ignored. I did a video not that long ago talking about the GTX 1650, Nvidia's last gen budget offering. Part of what motivated me to that is that if you ever suggest a GPU online, you're inevitably met with a deluge of Gee, I wonder why he unlisted this fucking dog shit video. Well, answering with some variant of just buy an older gen AMD GPU like the RX 550 or 570. Better performance can be found cheaper new. 
Um, my main criticism in the past to that argument had to do with AMD's not so great power supply and pricing, but the fact is these older AMD GPUs use way, way more energy for that. And that is rarely oh, mentioned. No. The way power consumption is generally taken out of the PC gaming conversation led me to an unexpected research rabbit hole, which reached a fever dream point of weirdness when I actually- Yo, is that literally the fucking one where he goes, and we need to get this graph down to zero. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, I think this is. I'm pretty sure this is it, bro. Hold on. Let me pull up the... We need the other reference here. Um, Where are you, Alex? No. Look, here's the thing. Fine. Listen, I'm going to be wrong, honest with you. Wrong Alex clip. Hold on. I don't have that on the soundboard. That's weird. I need to put that in my sound effect folder. I thought I did have that on. Shit. I'm slacking, bro. Here it is. All right. Here it is. I can close out of my file browser. And I've seen huh. Bill Gates say in that little uh, yuppie voice, <laughs> and then what we need to do is get this graph down to zero on carbon dioxide being output on the earth how are we going to do that well humans are the main thing and we we put out individually this amount at the ted conference what do you think about that everybody goes ah, ha, ha, and he goes that's right we've got to get this down to zero <laughs> and he puts his clicker and puts an image of a human up there and all the little anti-human control freaks you know, that mommy never disciplined, like, get off on the thrill of, ah, ha, 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 we're going to kill everybody. And Gates <laughs>, laughs with, mm, uh, and, and then there's a, I should do a special newscast on this on the nightly news, where I just show a little giggling about killing us. The giggling about killing us at TED conference. The giggling about killing us at another conference where he said, <laughs> if you, okay, mm -hmm, why is old Nellies that rule us? If we um, get rid of grandma and don't give her end of life care, we hire 10 teachers. What do you think about that? And I was like, oh yeah. Uh. I mean, it's just like scum, Nazi filth, trash, garbage, maggots. We you're all ruled by little chicken neck Nellies going, uh, kill everybody. I get off when I talk about t cutting people's power off. I'm a Nelly. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Just simpering control freaks in big nerd packs, taking everything over, ruling everything, becoming police officers with weapons, tasering us for fun. I've had it with control freaks and scum. You people are cancer. Uh, yeah. Oh, all right, I'm not in a good mood now. I just I start, I start thinking about Bill Gates up there with that little chicken neck. <laughs> Hopping or now, a little murdering Bro. eugenicist. Uh, you know how he it's walked like, uh, like a demonic elf. Hey, Bill Gates. Uh, I'm going to shoot you up with something that's going to kill you dead in the hammer. How's a 30-year death from gut disease sound, African children? Roll up the sleeves. I'm a little chicken neck bastard, and nobody's got the will to see what I am. But by the way, all that imp But yeah, dude, this is literally the fucking Bill Gates conference where he says he wants to get rid of 15% of the human population. He got an opportunity to work in oh partnership with Bill Gates. Yes, that Bill Gates, to put this obsession in mind into an actual video. Dude, he's literally using the footage where Bill Gates says he wants to kill everybody. And this, all right, what is this dude's accent? Bill Gates is releasing a new book on what humanity needs to do to avoid climate. Bro, hold on. Please tell me it's not as bad as I think. As an okay, he's from Spain. Whew. All right, bro. I was about to say, if he was from like India or Pakistan or something like that, because I couldn't tell what his accent was. Dog, I was about to say, bro. You literally are encouraging fucking Bill Gates to kill your country. But all right, he lives in Spain. But I mean, you know, Bill Gates is already wreaking havoc in Europe, so not really that much better. I'm a disaster that has to be one of the best and more complete. Yeah, I couldn't tell what his fucking accent was in all honesty. 
I thought he was Asian. Yeah, I couldn't tell. The gender-friendly explanations I have ever read about just how to navigate this topic as a non-scientist. And it helped me realize that a lot of what I thought about climate change was wrong. Now, here's an important disclaimer in case this was not clear. I am very far from being a climate expert, and I defer most of the bigger ideas about this to people who actually study things like this for a living, and have been doing so for years, like my colleague Simon, a person with an actual PhD in climate science. What I am is someone that spends way too much time asking questions about PC gaming and gaming technology that no one else seems to be doing. And this book gave me a lot of questions that I feel few people in PC gaming are asking. Um, by the end of this, I think you're going to have a bunch of questions too. Let's start somewhere. If you break down the source of all greenhouse gases in the world, in total it's the equivalent of about 51 billion tons of carbon emissions. The second biggest, with a whopping 27%, is power generation. Electricity. Now what got me into this whole line of thought in the first place was wondering the effect my gaming time had in power consumption and climate change in general based on a few facts. Well, it is a given that power consumption for gaming machines tends to increase over time as they become more powerful. Things like video game consoles have been doing a rather impressive job at keeping a somewhat consistent power consumption requirement. Oh my god, thank god, man. High-end PC gaming? It's not. It is shocking just how graphic cards have increased in power consumption generation. Who fucking gives a shit? Number generation. Well, it is true that there are increases in performance and features, our industry rarely seems to care about power efficiency. I AMD don't. is doing a bit better in this regard. In fact, they made a big deal about the improvement on performance per watt during their GPU presentation. We designed RDNA specifically for gaming, and our first-gen RDNA products delivered 50% better performance per watt over our GCN architecture. But this is likely the side effect of their GPU architecture being the one powering console, which the console market does care more about heat and power consumption than the PC gaming market does. However, you probably notice how I'm using high-end GPUs as a reference, which is very unusual for me. The reason I started there is because when you look at entry-level GPUs, things change dramatically. Architectural improvements mean that entry-level GPUs dramatically increase in performance generation over generation, with very little increases in peak performance. I am always shocked at how little conversation there is on how entry-level GPUs constantly improve performance per watt. This just never comes nobody fucking cares dude nobody gives a shit about a fucking 1650 bruh the only reason you're buying a 1650 is because you can't afford anything else let's keep it a buck 50 right like nobody's going on youtube like oh my god bro i'm so excited to check out the new information about the 1650 oh boy like duh nobody fucking cares about it Everybody cares about the 4090 and fucking 4080, the shit that people are actually interested in because they're cool and top of the line and, you know, <laughs> are fucking leading the industry. Thumbs up. Now, to be fair, one thing this book held me... This is like people being like, why does no one talk about the iPhone XR? Everybody talks about the new Pro Max. It's like nobody fucking cares about this. Like, bruh. Why are people excited about the new Samsung Fold? Why aren't they talking about the new fucking $200 track phone? Like, Bruh. duh, nobody gives a shit. You only buy that because you have to. Me understand is the general increases in power consumption in a population are not always a bad thing. As countries develop and people have access to more commodities to make their lives better, their power consumption increases, which is usually a sign that people are living better and longer lives, and the reason why it is so important to make renewable energy a valid option for developing countries. However, there's a point where this relationship breaks. There's a reason why people in developed countries, particularly places like the United States, consume way, way more power than someone in most of the rest of the world. Because we don't live in fucking huts. Well, the impact of more luxury-oriented items in carbon generation is disproportionately high. Now, the problem is that in PC gaming, so many people act like high-end is the standard rather than a deluxe option. Imagine if some of the PC budget gaming options received a significant amount of attention from enthusiasts like it happens in the console world for things like the Xbox Series S.
Okay, to be fair, as the book kept reminding me, it's not that simple. For example, if you're someone like me in a country in the European Union like Spain, where a big chunk of the energy generation is renewables or nuclear energy, your weather impact is going to be less than someone in the developing country where most of the energy can come from coal or oil. And as renewables technologically improve, there is a pathway to zero emission electricity there somewhere. So That's right, there is a path somewhere. carbon dioxide being output on the earth how are we going to do that well humans are the main thing and we we put out individually this amount at the ted conference what do you think about that everybody goes ah, ha, ha, and he goes that's right we've got to get this down to zero and he puts his clicker and puts an image of a human up there and all the little anti-human control freaks you know, that mommy never disciplined, like, get off on the thrill of, ah, 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 we're going to kill everybody. And Gates laughs with, mm, uh. <laughs> and, and then there's a, I should do a special newscast on this on the nightly news, where I just show a little giggling about killing us. The giggling about killing us at TED conference. The giggling about killing us at another conference where he said, if you, okay, mm -hmm, why is old Nellies that rule us? If we um, get rid of grandma and don't give her end of life care, we hire 10 teachers. What do you think about that? And I was like, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh. I mean, it's just like scum, Nazi filth, trash, garbage, maggots. We you're all ruled by little chicken neck Nellies going, uh, kill everybody. I get off when I talk about t cutting people's power off. I'm a Nelly. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Just simpering control freaks in big nerd packs, taking everything over, ruling everything, becoming police officers with weapons, tasering us for fun. I've had it with control freaks and scum. You people are <laughs> cancer. Uh, uh, all right, I'm not in a good but dude, it's so true. He's like, we gotta get it down somehow. So another thing this book has taught me is to think about it more globally. Our entire way of life is so tied with greenhouse gas emissions that it crops up in all the places. Yeah, and Bill Gates lives in a fucking 300 square foot fucking mega mansion, owns countless other properties around the fucking globe, jets literally everywhere he needs to go to. Which one fucking private jet flight emits more fucking greenhouse gas than a person's car will over the entire lifespan of that human? Fuck off. If anyone is listening to Bill Gates on anything, they are fucking stupid. Bro, Bill Gates flying in his jet one time emits more fucking carbon than you do in your entire fucking life. And these motherfuckers are going to sit up there and talk about how fucking damaging us having our refrigerators plugged in 24-7 or leaving our computers on is to the planet. Eat a fucking cock, bro. These motherfuckers are absolute fucking drones, dude. They are absolute fucking drones, bro. The fact you would ever listen to Bill Gates on anything and not think he's being an absolute piece of fucking human trash is insane. Oh, dude, I fucking hate it. It's just like these climate change fucking dipshits are so stupid. You were not paying attention to. If you saw this table that I used before, you were probably surprised to discover, as I was, that the fabrication of things is the first contributor to greenhouse gases, not electricity or cars or planes. Why this is so big is a large topic that is better summarized by the book. I mean, yeah, and do you know what the electricity actually goes to? Oh, it's not fucking people's houses. It has to do a lot with raw materials like steel and concrete. But I wonder at this point, so are you actually doing better by buying new, more power efficient components or sticking to your existing components for longer? Answering that question in any capacity took a bit more than I expected. Major companies release an ESG, boys. annual corporate responsibility reports that usually only mention greenhouse gases ESG. in the context of how much work they have done to lower how much they generate with some very sneaky wording on the fact that they have actually increased their emissions as the company grows. They're just increasing slower than they normally would. But if you dig hard enough, you can find things like this page from HP, 
As part of their sustainability reports, HP makes surprisingly detailed documents of the carbon footprint of a lot of their computers, and these approximations tend to break down the carbon footprint that comes from fabrication, transportation, and energy consumption from usage. This is fascinating stuff, and I will link the site in the bottom because it's very interesting. For No, it's fucking not. General purpose office PCs or thin clients, even on an approximate lifetime of five years, the fabrication of computers nearly outpaces the impact of the power consumed by the device to the point that it's very easy to ascertain that the majority of the greenhouse gases emitted on the entire computer's lifetime are from fabricating the darn thing. Things get a bit more complicated when you try to extrapolate to gaming devices. General use computers tend to just function with integrated GPUs and CPUs with fewer core counts, which have the inherent advantage of having a much lower power consumption. Gaming-focused devices, with their higher core counts and hungry GPUs, tend to use way more power. I could not find any gaming device in HP's study, but there were several workstation computers with them to sport dedicated GPUs that are closer to what we can expect on a gaming device. Assuming a 5-year lifetime, the extra power usage of these devices significantly increases the greenhouse gases it will be responsible for in comparison to fabrication. So that complicates things. So Graf Panzer with a five can't wait for the FTC case to be thrown out, so I can start hoping for Spider-Man Web of Shadows to be backwards compatible when Activision gets bought. I think that would be more of a licensing issue than anything, so it probably won't be because Activision I think made most of their stuff uh, backwards compatible that they own the uh, IP rights to. The problem would be is they probably don't have an active IP on Spider-Man anymore. And I sell it with the 10 start at 344. Yeah, we'll check it out after this. And Titanic Dick with the 2, I don't see China on that. Well, to be fair, China's power consumption per person is very low because 75% of the country doesn't even have access to, like, electricity and running water. So, yeah. It, China is a literal fucking third world shithole in the majority of its geographic area. And they do that and keep the majority of the country, like, in purposeful poverty to prop up the southeastern part of China so that they can all live wealthy where the Han Chinese are located uh, I sell it with the two Griffin give me 50 push ups I don't know bro it's a little too late for that one DEA with the two what's the name of the Alex Jones video I want it it's called Alex's Bill Gates Chicken Neck Bastard Rant so Alex's Bill Gates Chicken Neck Bastard Rant is the name. Lord Pothead Investor with a two. Spain needs to improve their education. Dude, the EU is so fucking cocked. Like, Europe is such a self-destructive continent at this point. It's incredible. Things. However, if nearly half or more than half of the greenhouse gases are emitted as the result of manufacturing... It seems I don't have a link because I don't think this video I downloaded is even on YouTube. But if you want to find it, that's what it's called. Alex's Bill Gates Chicken Neck Bastard Rant. That is your chance of finding it. That unless you have a very, I don't know very if inefficient on older I part downloaded. or a stupidly higher and modern one, the best play is actually to stick with your components as long as possible. Especially that's power right, supplies. Bro. Who knew those were such a big piece of the pie? Or... Dude, this makes me want to buy a new power supply every single year just so I can do my part. Buy you, used parts where you're not contributing to the fabrication of a new component. At the end of the day, while a lot of problems of climate change are structural and have to do with that basically our entire modern lifestyles are built on processes that emit a lot of greenhouse gases, on a very focused niche perspective, a lot of the problems on PC gaming's contribution to this specifically come with the whole perception of the hobby and its marketing. While console generations can last incredibly long, there's a bit of a push to almost upgrade dearly on PCs, especially if you consider yourself an enthusiast or a true PC gaming master race. Well, arguably the PC has tremendous potential for longevity, since you can upgrade individual components rather than the full device, a lot of this can be cancelled out by the marketing hype of nearly yearly releases in new CPUs or GPUs. 
Now because this is the low spec gamer, I do not need to preach to you about the silliness of frequent high-end computer upgrades. They won't That's because you're broke. You're fucking poor. But changing parts every four to five years, when they truly start generating issues, or upgrade it from something that you can play at 30 FPS at 720p to 60 FPS and 1080p feels like an enormous change, there are diminishing returns after that. Upgrade smarter, not more frequently. Be aware of the growing consumption of the looks components, especially in countries where most of the energy still comes from fossil fuels. Oh yeah, dude. That's right, guys. Sacrifice your enjoyment because of my fossil fuels. And if you have access to a decent used market of parts, use it. I promise you the woe factor of a lot of ultra expensive GPUs grows old much faster than people give it credit for. And flexing a line about what your computer can do won't make you happy. Look, I know the issue of climate change is tremendously complex and goes way beyond our tiny, tiny space of PC gaming. But as this book allowed me to see, reducing our global emissions from 51 billion to zero. Dude, you're reading a book that Bill Gates wrote on his fucking private jet, you fucking dipshit. No change you'd ever do in your entire fu You could literally stop emitting fucking CO2 for the rest of your fucking life. The harm that Bill Gates' jet did in the time that he sat on his fucking ass typing that book is more than you could undo in a hundred fucking lifetimes. Fuck off. You are buying into this fucking bullshit. What a dumbass, bro. It's a monumental civilizational shift in challenge. And to get there, we will need to think about how we make or do almost everything, including PC gaming. Next time you see a review for a new CPU or GPU talking about how much great value it is, join me in asking why the topic of power consumption is so rarely mentioned. This video was created in partnership with Bill Gates, inspired by his new book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster. You can find out more about how we can all work together to avoid a climate disaster in the link down below. Hey, Bill, why don't you stop taking your jet? Why don't you not have, uh, you know, 15 homes spread out across the world? Why do you live in a 30,000 square foot mega mansion? Yeah, I guarantee you Bill Gates sponsored the video. Dude, like, look at this shit. Look at this. This is the guy that wants you to unplug your refrigerator at night to save power. Fuck off, dude. He lives in a fucking $130 million home, bruh. I did three things this morning. One, I woke up. Two, I had dinner and laughed with Bill Gates at his Xanadu mansion. Three, I started making this video. However, the order that it actually happened was two, one, and then three. However, a quick Google search will let you know that the Microsoft co-founder has several real estate listings along with his now ex-wife, Melinda Gates. This is common with... Why did she leave him, I wonder? I wonder if it's because uh, he went to a certain island that he didn't own. Celebrity, but his money helped buy families with examples like the Smiths and their $42 million real estate, the Obamas and their $12 million Martha's Vineyard. Look at that shit. A career politician making a little over $100,000 a year somehow afforded a $12 million house? <gasps> How does that happen? Oh, no. How did that happen, guys? Crazy. In your estate, the Kardashian Jenner 192 Silicon Valley, sorry, 192 million All right, let's Indian skip. Wells Vintage Club, $12.5 million. Amidst rumors of a relationship with the world's most popular babysitter, and since the announcement from him and Melinda to separate, Bill has been having a really hard time. And like every man out there, when you're fighting with your wife, poor Bill, you gotta go sleep on the couch. In this case, however, the $12.5 million Vintage Club estate in Indian Wells, California, I bet that has a lot of air conditioning it's bill gates's couch during these tough times it's been <gasps> is he burnt <gasps> dude of a state in indian wells california it's bill gates he's burning fossil fuels in his fireplace bruh i guarantee you that shit's natural gas and it isn't wood oh bill 
Are you burning fossil fuels in your home? his couch during these tough no. times. It's been reported that he's been resting in the home for some time now, and the house is fitted with the most luxurious amenities. You really don't have to feel sorry for him. The club was opened in 1980, and Mr. Gates has had property there for about three decades now. <gasps> Unnecessary running water? Bill. The membership costs a quarter of a million dollars, and the 13,000 square foot mansion has six bedrooms and 11 bathrooms. Vintage club at... I'm sure the, you know carbon footprint of that house isn't very high self affords the billionaire with an 18 hole golf course a poolside restaurant 11 tennis courts a primary restaurant and an 18,000 square foot spa and wellness center with personal trainers and group classes with members from either of the other 500 luxurious homes in the club number four rancho santa fe 18 million dollars as one of the richest men in the world your gifts are sure to be different from the regular individuals with bill gates the mansion in santa fe is just enough to put a smile on the face of his daughter Jennifer as the equestrian estate was the perfect place to practice for her horseback riding career. This is because the 229 acre estate has a horse ranch, four 30 stall barns, and a fifth 21 stall barn, a three quarter mile. You guys haven't heard about the fridge thing? Well, technically, your fridge and freezer will preserve whatever's in it for 24 hours so long as you don't open it. So, climate experts have recommended that at night before you go to bed, you cut power to your refrigerator and leave it fucking sealed overnight and then plug it back in in the morning when you actually need to start using it. So that way you can save carbon emissions, guys. It reduces your energy usage. Also, during the day, turn off your heating and air conditioning. Come on, man. Do your part. Bill Gates needs his 17 fucking mansions and private jet flights. You all are the real problem. A racetrack and is also close to a horse racetrack. The estate was purchased from another horse racing enthusiast in 2014, Jenny Craig, founder of the weight loss and nutrition company, also called Jenny Craig. The estate also has a main house, a guest house, two spacious apartments, an office, a veterinarian suite, and an olive orchard. Number three, Wellington Real Estate, $27.2 million. Now, Wellington in Florida could be called the second home of the Gateses, as they have other properties there that keep them close to their daughter. Jennifer, who competes at the International Equestrian Center in Palm Beach, Florida. The properties they own include the 20,400 square foot mansion. Oh, I'm sure that doesn't have a carbon footprint. At 36. Especially in Florida, man. It's a very temperate climate. I'm sure the AC is never running. Mallet Hill Court. This house has four bedrooms, four bathrooms, and a half bathroom. It has a 600 square foot screen porch, a 600 square foot garage, and a 140 square foot open porch. It's an equestrian estate with facilities for horses. The main house has a wood truss roof structure, a concrete tile roof cover, and has electric heating. All of this comes together to make the house as comfortable as possible in terms of temperature, and this property oh. cost them 13. Temperature? With five million. Bill, while the inside of your house is cooling, the earth is increasing in temperature, dude. Come on now. You're depleting the ozone. Million dollars. The other properties they have in Wellington include two vacant lots in Mallet Hill Court, costing just $5 million and totaling 2.6 acres together. Finally, the Gates has also purchased an $8.7 million estate, also in Mallet Hill Court, in 2013. Number two, Del Mar Mansion, $43 million. In 2020, Bill and Melinda Gates purchased an oceanfront mansion in San Diego, California. But wait! Why would Bill Gates buy a beach house? When sea levels are rising. <gasps> Dude, what? No. Are you telling me that Bill Gates, the guy who's worried about our city's flooding from the melting ice caps, bought beachfront property? Oh, come on, Bill. You've got to be smarter than that. California for a whopping $43 million. The Del Mar mansion was purchased Dude, from... Fuck, I hate these fucking retards, man. These people are fucking stupid. If you believe a minute of these fucking grifting dipshits.
Adeline Pickens, who was a businesswoman I mean, and horse so breeder. She was married to dude. Thomas Boone Pickens Jr., a business magnate and financier who died in 2019. They purchased the house for $43 million from Madeline, who got it for $48 million with her husband. A loss for Mrs. Pickens, but a profit for the Gateses as the main house spans almost 6,000 square feet of space with six bedrooms and four bathrooms, plus two guest houses as well. The main living area is spacious and also has retractable glass walls that open up to give an even more space is fine. This living area also has a dining area and a fireplace. The second sitting room in the main house is also open air with swimming pools and jacuzzis. Oh, either. it has nothing to fucking do with the climate. They don't give a fuck, man. It's all a grift. It's just a transfer of wealth side of the room. Meanwhile, there's also a fireplace just beneath the flat screen TV. The interior design was done by Ken Ronchetti in 1999 and is designed to give the home a resort-like feel even when you're inside. This it's includes the ugly. master bedroom with its own lounge. The house looks like shit in all honesty though. Lounge, vanity, and fireplace. The home also comes with radiant floor heating, a state-of-the-art home theater, and a health and fitness spa. When you go outside though, you greet- We know how much Bill loves his massages by many luxurious features for relaxing, like a tennis court, a jacuzzi that will fit 10 people, a special cozy space with luxury furnishings and outdoor fireplace, several patios and terraces, and at the center of the compound is the mosaic tile pool that looks absolutely stunning when lit up at night. The Del Mar Mansion has limestone floors, beautiful application of the finest woods and stones for the build of the apartments, automated lighting and security, and other awesome features. The estate is known all through the area as it covers over 120 feet of waterfront in a very spectacular way. Number one, Xanadu 2.0, $127 million. If you've watched Citizen Kane, then that name already sounds familiar. It's the mansion palace belonging to the wealthy protagonist of the movie, Charles Foster Kane, where he utters the famous words, and dies alone. Bill Gates will hope that Xanadu 2.0 holds better fortunes for him as he has surely spent a lot on the property. He purchased it for just $2 million in 1988 and then spent over $63 million in seven years to build the high-tech home. It is reported Look at all those carbon emissions, man. Heard that over 500-year-old Douglas fir trees, 300 workers, 500,000 board feet of Oh my god, he took part in deforestation to build the house? lumber and more were used in the construction of this building. The house has a lakefront property that has an area of lakefront 66,000 uh -oh. square feet on five acres of land and has seven bedrooms, 10 full bathrooms, 14. You know, guys, when climate change takes effect, that lake is going to completely dry up half bathrooms and six spacious exquisite kitchens the majority of the state is underground and this makes the house not look as big as it truly is it has several garages a large trample oh bill where are your priuses and this makes the house not look as no. big as it truly is it has several gar gas guzzlers oh <gasps> bill you should do better than that why do you need so many cars? Garages, a large trampoline, 1,900 square foot guest house, and a state-of-the-art high-tech home theater with... I fucking hate these people, man. ...controls in the viewer's <laughs> so seat. One of the much. biggest rooms is the 2,300 square foot reception hall that will seat 150 guests. It has a massive screen and six-foot limestone fireplace. The reception hall may be big until you enter the nearly 4,000 square foot building for the 60-foot pool, four showers, and two baths. You can I bet that's a heated pool. Go for a dive inside the pool building and swim beneath a glass wall to get into the terrace area of the house. And if you decide to head out to the beach, you can enjoy the feel of the sand that Mr. Gates imported from a tropical beach in St. Lucia. If you're a... Oh my... Bill, you destroyed... You destroyed the habitat? Oh no. He imported all of that sand... So not only did he destroy the environment where he built the house, but then he destroyed the environment, digging up all the sand, and then he fucking shipped it halfway across the world? Oh my god, Bill. What are you doing? guest visiting the gates at Xanadu 2.0, you'll be given a pin at the gate which will interact with sensors all over the property. This will give you certain powers to determine preferences like lighting, music from speakers behind wallpapers, and temperature. Speaking of temperature, the house was built into its aquatic environment to help regulate temperature and conserve energy. This is another reason- <laughs> Yeah, guys. Doesn't this scream I'm worried about conserving energy? 
a $130 million mega mansion. I'm sure Bill's really worried about conserving energy. In for its underground design. All in all, the only thing missing from this house that would have been the highlight is the chandelier. And hopefully by the end of his divorce settlement with his wife, you won't have to watch only half this video. But while they still own the properties, which house was your favorite that you would like to have if you could? And why is it Xanadu 2.0? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave oh, us yeah, a like. You can check. The Saudis are based. But dude, it's just, I, I don't know. It just shows you how fucking stupid these people are. Like this dipshit read Bill Gates' book on how we can all do our part when it comes to climate change. But I'm sure that book didn't mention Bill's fucking 15 mega mansions he has all over the fucking world. Or how much his fucking private jet emits. I mean, it's just, oh dude, it's so irritating. It is so fucking irritating, man. Oh, God. What the fuck? The shower scene? Bruh. Oh, fuck off, dude. Why is this age restricted? I mean, I get it's a shower scene, but I've seen the movie. It's not bad. It's just some ass, bruh. Hey. Hey. Hey guys, it's Pride Month. We have to, uh, you know, take in the culture, right? It's past my bedtime, bro. I gotta go after this. This will be it for me, man. Bruh. Oh my god. <laughs> Hard to get. Dude, it's fucking four. I probably should hop off, guys. Damn, man. Oh. No, Griffin will be dreaming about Benedicta. Stomping on me with her fucking leather boots, but nah. I don't actually like remember any of my dreams recently, so I don't know, man. So many videos, that's right. Bill Gates versus the human calculator. Did he meet her when she was 13? <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god, dude. Wasn't it Bill Gates that used to walk up to random chicks that worked at Microsoft and be like, hey, no pressure, but would you like to come over to my house and have sex? I'm pretty sure that was Bill Gates, right? He got, like, exposed for that type of shit. Like, he literally would just walk up to, like, random employees at the office and ask them to come home with him and have sex. No pressure or anything. I just own the company, but come home and have sex with me. Bruh. This is the fucking hero that people hold up, guys. This is the hero that's going to save humanity, guys. Hold on, we need to end it with something based. I believe, oh, here teacher, go. that's a different thing. We're cowards or have been induced into cowardice and are threatened by real base male material. activity. That's why I'm telling you, anybody that acts like a Nelly, watch them. In power. If it's a piano teacher, that's a different thing. Watch them. It's a cover, okay? I see all of you. I see exactly what you are, psychopathic criminals. <clears throat> You see, I think when I get up here and get angry at the New World Order and tell you how evil they are, that you've got courage and want to defeat them. People that are ignorant send me emails and say, why are you trying to scare people? I'm not trying to scare somebody. If I, if I tell my kids, don't go out in the highway, there's cars that will run you over and kill you. I'm not trying to scare them. I'm telling them about a reality that's there. I believe from history and my own gut instinct that if I... Go ahead and lay it out all out here. What we're really facing, you've got courage and you've got will, and you're going to get angry and stop caring.
It begins with not caring about what your slack-jawed, knuckle-dragon, cowardly, pseudo-tough guy, football-watching neighbor thinks. Okay? That's where it begins. It begins with not caring what happens to your individual person. And when you have that attitude, when you have that attitude, then the enemy doesn't have anything over you anymore. Stop being gelded, domesticated garbage. Stop being weak. And when you see a threat come down on you, deal with it. Become a human again. Stop being weak. We got a bunch of criminals coming down on us. God. <laughs> Murdering scum. I want to get humanity awake. I want to get our forces up. And then I want to bring these people to justice. And you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I want to unleash humanity. Not have a bunch of con artists, pot bellied, chicken neck, pieces of garbage running our world. More importantly, they act like effeminate, cowardly chicken necks because they want to train you to act like that. They want to train you to be weak. God. They want to train you. That's a nasty taste coming up in my mouth. I'm just tasting those globalists. <laughs> I can taste their fear and their weakness. <laughs> I taste metal. I taste blood. I can't afford this shit. Probably shouldn't be on air today. I almost didn't do the show today because I'm in a bad mood, man. <laughs> and looking at Al Gore's fat, ugly face doesn't help. And pulling up the image of Bill Gates, that piece of garbage, and all the stuff he's done to innocent people it makes me want to throw up. Oh, boy, I tell you, I tell you, we're going to get people awake to you, you bastards, and we're coming for you. We're coming straight for you, and you know it. That's why you're so scared. That's why you're moving so fast now. And you just better keep doing that dance, because you can feel that flame of rebellion starting to lap up and lick right up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Ah! <laughs> Man, you know what it's like to be able to see these people, to know who they are, to just see them conning everybody? I am so sick of it. I am so tired of it. I've never liked con artists. I've never liked scammers and bullies and scum, and I don't want to be ruled by them, and I sure don't want you to be ruled by them. All right, we're going to break, and we'll come back. I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll come back with Jason and Adam and Chris and Tim and Severin and everybody else. Uh, we're going to come back. I'm going to try to settle down. <laughs> but I start thinking about all those effeminate men with their legs all crossed, with little twitly looks on their face, giggling about killing humanity. I mean, it's a normal response to a pack of scum saying they're going to kill you to get angry, ladies and gentlemen, and then to have to fight them day after day after day and know the facts and know the proof upon proof upon proof of their guilt, and then to sit there and have ninnies on the street argue with me and throw cliched statements about conspiracy theories back when I'm giving you history and facts. That's why I get enraged here on air, because it is just ridiculous. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's a good way to end it, man. So I saw it with the two Melanie videos. Oh my God. And I saw it with the two overall. This community is based. I love it. I appreciate it, man. I'd say we have a nice, uh, nice group here, but I hope you all have a, uh, great two or no, it's not too fuck. What is today? It's Tuesday today. No, it's fucking when, Never mind. All right. Have a great Thursday, everyone. I don't know what fucking day of the week it is. So hopefully y'all have a great Thursday. Big ups to everybody in the chat. I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Hope to see everyone there. But have a good one, everyone, and peace out.